Hey, welcome back to Metropolitan Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. It is currently February 27th. Oh, there's Nanako. Look at her go. Cleaning herself. Super important to maintain proper hygiene. How's everyone doing? Welcome back to the Metropolitan Grid. We have a Tuesday stream. We're going to be hanging out here for a couple hours as we do on Tuesdays. Hopefully you are doing well. A bit of a circus getting ready for this stream. Uh, Nana was on the back of my chair, tried to pick her up. She rode my back like a damn palanquin. Couldn't get her off. Had to walk around hunched. It was fine. When's the last time you cleaned yourself? Boggles, I take a shower once a week on Sunday, whether I need it or not. Thank you. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> How's everyone doing? Let me catch up on stream. Yo, Metro Stream Tuesday time. Stab, how you doing? Yo, Alec. Only three cards give stealth credits these days. Yeah, it's pretty rough. It's, uh, there's like three stealth credit giving cards, and then there's like three stealth credit using cards, maybe four. But it's a really funny thing to search, because if you search X stealth, okay, hold on, X stealth Z standard, you get all the cards that say the word stealth on their flavor, or on their actual text. So it's only three cards that use stealth credits. A decoder slash maybe fractor, a killer, which is pretty good. Uh, and then move safe cracker, which is not very good. But shows you originally how KG, NSG, or Nisei back in the day used to be about designing R&D pressure from Criminal, which now they're a bit more open. And now we've kind of moved to central server pressure, which is pretty cool. And then if you want cards that are stealth typed, what's type? Is it a T? Is it S? The fact that Arkham Horror does it differently means I'm always going to do it wrong. Yeah, there's only three cards. Mantle, which is... Should be fine, right? Uh, Penumbral Toolkit, which is not very good as much as Sure Gamble seems fine if you really kind of work on it. And then... Oh, this is not on. That's why I'm dark. Oh, that's better. And then, uh, yeah, Taka, which is totally fine. I quite enjoy a shoulder cap boa. She went full back. Like, I kind of leaned down and she's riding me like an elephant. Uh, and then I'm like, you need to get off now because I have to go do things. The sink is running. So, yeah. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Morning, Joe, how you doing? How you been? There's an event recently in Toronto, right? I started to see a bunch of Toronto folks' uh, deck list coming up. Intro music this week giving me Ollie Ollie World vibes? Yeah, I think that last track might have. Um, I've beaten Ollie Ollie World. I quite like skateboarding video games. I thought Oli Oli World was like a really nice, refreshing change. Uh, it's been a while, though. Is Cold Lead still regal? legal? Almost definitely not. Yeah, Flashpoint. This was a really cool card. It was the only run event that gave stealth credits, but it's cool to see, like, you know, events with stealth subtype. For those who don't know, mind you, if you're just getting into Netrunner, there's like barely any, yeah, as we saw, stealth cards. So stealth is a subtype of cards and or credits that have no uh, unique, like there's no ingrained rules text surrounding them. It's just certain cards asked to be only using stealth credits. So it's a limited resource. And generally stealth credits have been used classically to produce some of the like the best breakers of all time, but they're hungry on stealth credits. So actually a better version than this is Switchblade. How bonkers is this? One credit to get plus seven strength for a century breaker, but you can only use this ability on spending a credit on a stealth card. So if as long as you have stealth stuff, you're cutting through all of the killers, no problem. You're breaking some of the big stuff. Mind you, one per one subroutine isn't amazing. Classically, that's, you know, a lot of centuries have low strength, high subroutines. Uh, but yeah, that's how it used to be back in the day. Generally, the decoders are really, really quite nice. The stealth fractors have always been very quite bad. Uh, but we're in a spot where we still have some stealth cards left over. We used to have a stealth ID, mind you, for those who don't know, Smoke, who basically she had a stealth credit every turn, which is pretty great because then you already always have one and then you had ways to move it around and stuff like that. Uh, but this is a subtype that technically stealth cards in the card pool and we're going to be exploring it only slightly. We are going to be touching some stealth cards, but we're not going to be making a stealth build. There's a deck list that I've been putting together that I thought I'd have time to, yesterday to do like a little bit of gameplay capture on. But we're going to start it today because I think it seems fun as much as I'm not 100% sure where we should be going. Cold Reed went with Smoke and Mercury. Mantle is a good way to abuse twinning. Yeah, so it's really strange, right? So this is Rizeki. Zeki, luckily, has been banned for a while now. It just installed for one MEU and it gave you a credit a turn. Now, when your turn begins, that's really kind, and it's also just a credit that goes into your credit pool. But it is worth knowing in the history of Netrunner, we've had so many similar cards that give you one credit of value that saw very little to no play. 
This is Cyber Feeder. And mind you, early Anarch, this was from the original 2012 core set. It gave you a credit a turn for installing viruses or using icebreakers. So as long as you're, you know, playing viruses or just running once a turn, this is a credit a turn for two credits. So there's like this backbone of so many Netrunner cards that are just like a one or two credit eight install that give you one credit a turn. In fact, a lot of the stealth cards are like exactly that as much as stealth is much more specifically narrowed. Uh, this is one credit to use stealth fractors. And then there's one of these for every single um, type of breaker, right? Just across the different fractions. And these also didn't see that much play in stealth rigs. Um, I think they saw some play, but they weren't the most popular. This art is so goofy, considering how small that thing is. But the one stealth card that I, we are going to be playing today is Mantle. And it's not Rezeki, but it should be Rezeki, right? Like, it's a card that we install really cheaply that gives us hopefully one credit every single turn. To use hardware and programs is... Use programs alone means you can use it for icebreakers, so that's already done it. If you have programs that have paid abilities that cost things, so like cracking a self-modifying code, not using the install cost, that's good. And then, of course, we're going to be using it because we can use this easily on the corpse turn by either boosting our breaker on the corpse turn to get 20 once per turn, which is a very important thing to do. Mind you, that's the really big thing about Mantle, is that your stealth credits refresh at the front of your turn. So if it's the corpse turn... Twinning can be boosted once per turn, so the corpse turn is a cromulent turn. So on the corpse turn, if you still have a twinning counter, or sorry, a mantle counter, just boost one of your breakers. You don't have to be during a run, and then it'll refresh when your turn starts, and you can do twinning twice a turn. So the one that we're using, which works really nice, is Prognostic, because Prognostic is a credit to use a hardware every turn, and we can use it on the corpse turn as well. So we can get double value on multiple angles, which is pretty cool. So we'll see how to do. You should teach you to say pieces of eight. I don't know what that reference is, Poglas. After Image is cool, but dang, Switchblade is one of my favorites. Yeah, there's a soft spot for like a bunch of old heads who played old stealth decks. Like Criminal used to play stealth. The only faction that never really played stealth consistently was Anarch. So Shaper and Criminal did it. It was really fun. Especially because Criminal wanted to run cheaply and stealth allowed them to run cheaply and get money. Yo, Pod, stealth. What has inspired this? Uh, I'll show you the list I'm working on uh, because it's not exactly a stealth deck. I think people saw the name and maybe ran with it, but it is playing some stealth cards. Uh, but there's some ideas here that I think this is maybe one and a half decks pushed into one deck. We might want to separate it, but I'll explain what I'm doing here. I'll just leave this on the screen for a second. Uh, this, mind you, was kind of inspired by uh, Diogen posted a deck list that had Maven in it that I thought was pretty cool. And it was actually a really cool home for a bunch of the cards in the recent set that either see no play or one of the recent sets or uh, need a reason to see play. And he didn't put any of them, which is really surprising. But we'll go through this, go through this in just a second. Let me catch up on chat. Is the mantle just worse Chesva? It is, um, sort of. Mantle, mind you, you can use on the opponent's turn. You can use that at any paid ability. So the idea is that we can boost our breakers on the corporation's turn is a really big difference between Mantle and Chesva. Chesva is also only on central servers. That's not the biggest deal, but it's also three influence. And you can only use it during a run. So the idea is that we can crack Mantle on the corporation's turn to pay for prognostic. That is, it's a unique own thing. Mind you, back in the day, we also had a card that was just like Mantle++ plus plus, that was multi-threader. It cost one influence, and it just says for using programs, so not hardware. So it wasn't like Chesva text, because Chesva allows you to use it during anything during central server runs. But a lot of the decks back in the day would consider playing this if they were playing some weird greedy like boost engine or something like that. Uh, this card is kind of cool, but this doesn't exist anymore. So there is a distinct difference between Mantle and Chesva, but Chesva is probably a higher power level card. It's just more limited in some ways what you can do with it. Yeah, Kulubari, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I caught up on chat. Hopefully everyone's doing well. So, what the idea was here is Diogene posted this. If Andromeda was released as an ID, would she still be played or has she been power crapped? Yo, Jimmy Lad, how's it going? I'm assuming she would still see play. Um, I don't think she's been power crapped. I think she would see play. And unfortunately, she'd be relatively boring. I think a lot of the criminal IDs right now, their abilities are good, but they're somewhat interchangeable. Like, you can argue that Sable versus Zaya is, you know, somewhat comparable. The most important thing about Andromeda is it gave you good early openings, and if you can nail your opening, you generally were pretty good for the rest of the game, right? Like, just setting up and having a 9-card, let alone start, but 9-card mulligan was kind of pretty sick. And then you just played the rest of the game. You had Link back then, which was really valuable for Andromeda, but I'd assume she would still see some amount of play to make sure that your early game is really good, you're good at pressuring remote servers, you can get down some sort of engine, stuff like that. Uh, you probably would want to consider DJ Fenris just to have a bit more of an ideal ability text. Mind you, Rebirth was around back then. So I don't think she's been strictly power crept. I think she's less interesting. 
And I think it feels like choosing between an ID that has text and an ID that like sort of has text. But like nailing the early game in Netrunner is very, very important because it's the only part of the game you're assured that's going to happen. Uh, and there's a lot of criminal decks that are, I think, somewhat comparable as much as like Sable's value is really good. And Zaya can give you good money and have a smaller deck size. So, yeah, I think she would still see play. I don't know if she would be the best. The thing is, like, you can play Andy, like you can play Andy now and put Leela in it, right? Like, you're basically Andy Leela circa 2017 or whatever, because you just play Hermes Andy, and it's probably quite fine. So, who knows? I feel like you're doing stealth twinning. Anarch might be more consistent because Taka counts as second mantle that doesn't take up MU. Uh, yes. But we're not doing stealth. But I think you might be right. I honestly think if I was going to play stealth, I'd probably do as first. Uh, just because the stealth engine inherently works relatively well with as, uh, considering hardware setup is good, prognostic is just a good as card, and twinning is a good as card because you're playing Chesva. I think I'd probably do that sooner than Anarch. I don't know if I'd splash Taka. I think you. The difference with stealth now and stealth then is like I think if you're playing stealth modernly, you'd only play um uh the the cheetah. Like I don't think you would play Penrose. Right. Like I think if you're playing modern stealth in criminal, I don't know if you play this. Because I think you're just running enough stealth credits that you have a really busted after image, but you don't need to like worry about this. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe the after image is more important, or sorry, Penrose is more important because breaking code gates in the middle late game is harder for criminals. Maybe you'd play both. I'm not sure how many stealth credits you play, but like you'd probably be playing some amount of mantles. If you want to lean into twinning mantle power, divine conquer is a good payoff card. Oh, Toronto, how's it going? Out there, divide and conquering all the time. Um, let me show you what this list was, because I thought this was kind of neat, and it did some cool stuff in it. So, it's an Arasana deck, it's 45 cards, and it's playing this, which is an icebreaker you might not have seen before. It's an AI, it's an old card from the Red Sand Cycle, it's called Maven. It takes up 2 MU and costs a lot, but it's an AI, so it can break any type of ice. Now, it technically comes in at 1 strength, because it has 1 strength for each installed program, so it does count itself, and then it breaks 2 credits to break a single ice subroutine. That's really bad text. Um... It's good that it's flexible, and if you're installing a lot of programs anyways, which we're going to argue we're doing in our Asana, two credits to break a single subroutine is not fantastic. We are going to also run into some strength issues, right? Like breaking an early six strength ice on a gatekeeper or a brawn or a seven strength stavka. Like there are issues to this that you have to build around, and there's ways to address it. But two credits per subroutine is going to be really, really expensive. I don't think there's any way around that. It's great, but it's not amazing. Hey, there's Diogen. How's it going, man? Um, which is really cool because then there's a card that. I think is powerful, but hasn't had a home really yet, which is Poison Vial. Because the idea is that if you have a Poison Vial down, you actually can break a three subroutine ice for only two credits, which is a steal. Because that's two credits and then not boosting any subroutines. So the idea is that you can get through abstractly in the mid to late game, once you have a lot of stuff installed, don't worry about it too much. You can get through something like an Anansi for two credits. Like that's kind of nice. And so we have this idea here that if we install a lot of programs, play Maven and play Poison Vial, we have a bit of an engine. And then on top of it, we're playing Arasana, which is really cool because Arasana can get down those programs clicklessly or sort of clicklessly with a lot of click compression. So you have things like Urban Art Vernissage or Environmental Testing, Lilypad, all this sort of stuff that helps you set up. And so that you can get down a lot of stuff really quickly and set yourself up a bit quicker and get that sort of click compression you would need to do this. Um, we also have Slap Vandal. And like at the end of the day, Slap Vandal is on its own enough reason to play Poison. Poison Vial. It's not something you want to really rely on to the early to late game, but the idea is that you can break literally nearly every ice in the game for one credit with Poison Vial is fantastic. And Poison Vial on its own also is interesting enough. Like you can click through a brawn once and then break it for a single click. Like there's some really, really good stuff in here. Now I'd argue that there's some more stuff you want to do with this deck and my version's a bit different. And there's a single card that is arguably a bit too greedy, but probably a bit interesting that I think is an Arsana card I've never played, which, yeah, Daijin is saying, will you put a flex capacitor as suggested by a fellow player? Flex capacitor is like the perfect card for this sort of deck because it's a cheap program to install and it allows you to recharge your poison vials, which are very, very powerful cards in this deck. Uh, the prognostic Q loop is also really cute. I like that a fair bit. So I made a version of this and then I changed it and I changed it and we're three changes deep and I haven't played it yet, but this is the version that I've put together so far. So, importantly, we need a win condition. We're untwinning. 
Uh, I think this is actually really kind of important because this version of the deck is running on Conduit and it's actually not that good, I'd imagine, at running R&D multiple times. Because if you're spending two credits to break each ice and you're running out of Poison Vial charges, like I don't think you can slam R&D uh, over and over again. So I don't like Conduit as a multi-axis tool. We also are relying on Leech in this deck, which is quite cute because you want to use Leech to kind of deal with the downsides of, of uh, Maven, which I think is correct as much as we don't get too much good value from running like abstract central servers besides our Asana and like Urban Art Vernissage. So I think that's cool, but um, yeah, I think with Mavirus being around and the fact that running R&D is relatively unwieldy over and over again, we need something that's a bit more a targeted run than we need mass value of access as a run. So we went to the twinning, which uh, was a three influence hole, which cut us off from doing something else, but I think that's pretty cool. Flux is a Padma card, uh, technically, but it's a, you know, it's a Trojan. So that's the way that I want to see it. Uh, but yeah, you're right. It did not come out of the set. Let me just catch up on check. Have you played Blotcher yet? Yes, I have. I've done a couple runs. Yeti, how's it going? I've done a couple successful runs. Um, I got eventually Endless Mode gets you. I think it's cool. I played the demo, really liked it. I think it's going to be a really big game for a lot of people. Numbers going up is really fun. Um, in some ways, it is super, super mathy and it's going to keep a lot of people out of the game because of that, because you have to do a lot of like quick mental math uh, with really relatively big numbers, um, which is a bummer. But it's an absolute treat the way that it allows you the flexibility to basically do whatever you want with uh, the rules engines. And you can get like ridiculous multipliers and kind of break the game. Uh, and some of the builds are like really, really, really satisfying as much as I'm not a poker head. So it's pretty great. What is the game you mentioned? Yo, Veronica, how's it going? Blacho? Yes, it's Blacho. It came out last week. I know we shouted it out. I'm searching Neron DB for Blacho. Uh, it's pretty cheap. It's like 20 bucks. I'm a bit sick right now. Blue got me. Oh, hopefully you're feeling better soon, hey? Uh, yeah, overwhelmingly positive on Steam, 9,000 reviews, it's at 97%, and it's basically a game in which you have a deck of 52 cards, a standard bicycle deck it starts with, and then you basically play hands of poker, and your hands score out, and then throughout the game, you have a money economy system, unlike a lot of these kind of auto chess games, it's not an auto chess game, and then you use that system to buy jokers that give you modifiers that change how you want to play cards. So, like, you can get a joker that says, all clubs and spades count as the same suit, all diamonds and hearts count as the same suit. Then you can get another one that says, like, uh, I don't know, every time that you play a certain rank, the rank of that that play hand multiplies for the rest of the round. And so you end up in these situations where you start to have to get really, really high scores that seem impossible considering your first ante is like 300 and then your last ante is like 120,000. Uh, but you do that by manipulating your deck and the way you play and getting score multipliers. And it's really, really satisfying as long as you're a numbers based person. I think a lot of non numbers people can like enjoy Slay the Spire. But for this game, if you're not doing like somewhat quick mental math, it might be a bit of a bear. It's also like only 60 megabytes. It's like a tiny thing. The music is so good. It's like really haunting music and the aesthetic is like really clean um quite great i'm definitely gonna be playing a lot more of it i've been playing a bunch of rogue book this week too uh but blacho yeah i've done a couple runs of it i played a lot of the demo so it's not that different than the demo the demo was incredibly generous uh but there's a lot more game in this for sure it sounds fun yeah check it out it's like 19 dollars. i highly recommend on steam too you can always try a game and if you don't think it's your thing like don't abuse the system but you can return it if you've played it less than two hours if you don't think it's your thing and they it's fine I, it's a good policy just don't like buy games beat and return it you'd be a dickhead I've waited long for Poison Vile Flux Capacitor deck hyped. Yeah, Dave. Hell yeah. It's brilliantly balanced IMO, just super fun. Got it on Switch and can't put it down. Oh, it's good that it's on consoles. It's a sort of game that also I reckon should be on mobile at some point. Like, it really seems like it'd be a good mobile game because you can put it up and put it down. I was going to say just Nyasha instead of Conduit, but it seems like you got it in this version, like an alternative option. Yeah, but how's it going? I'm not totally sold on Nyasha, but we're going to try it because it is an alternate version. I'm worried we're going to stretch our fluxes a bit too thin, but we'll see there. Uh, Jad, how's it going? I saw your message about Blotcher on Boss stream yesterday and ended up playing it until 3 a.m. Oh, no. Uh, hopefully you're sleeping okay. But it is definitely the game that can do that. I got rolled by Divide and Conquer as a pub runner last week. Glad to see that card getting some licks in before it goes. I guess it does go. Hey, Eric, is there a card archetype you hope gets support in the new Netrunner set coming out soon? On that note, I got spoilers cards. I got a couple spoilers cards. If you want to pry for questions, I can maybe answer none of them, but you can try. Uh, but spoiler season starts really soon. And NSG was kind enough to reach out to give us some spoilers cards to talk about. Uh, obviously, like all that sort of stuff is going to start as of March. Community stuff usually happens after NSG official stuff, but like March is around the corner. So I don't think we have too long to wait. Uh, corpse spoilers or runner spoilers? Oh, good question. Yeah, I can answer that. Corpse spoilers. It's corpse spoilers. I think I can answer that. Yeah, corpse spoilers. Uh, two of the cards are unique. That's usually where I'll keep it at. 
<laughs> wet scoop seasons. <laughs> Friday is March. Yeah, I'm pretty sure spoilers are going to start really soon. I don't like have a date locked down when my spoilers are going to go out, but I just got the cards delivered last night. Um, I think out of what I have. What can I say? I think one of the cards I have is incredibly important. Another card is really fun and another card is really mean. Let's keep it at that. Uh, otherwise, you know, subscribe to the channel. We'll have spoilers on again. March is really soon. So I'm pretty sure things are going to start relatively quickly. Uh, faction, I can't say that. There's no way I'm able to say that. Uh, is there a card archetype you hope gets some support, though? A card archetype? Um, I'd like to be able to play Padma and not feel bad about it. I think that's kind of interesting. I'm, like, really excited to see more about what expendable is up to and taking risks and hitting like i want the runner to see an agenda in archives and not want to steal it because i don't think oppo is that answer because i think oppo is just a bit boring and attritional right now but like i want a mid seasons as much as i don't i want something more healthy but like i i re-watched recently the spoilers video i put up for the last set for liberation just to see what it is to remember that i have to do this again in a minute so i just watched it at 2x speed yesterday uh, and I know, like, I want to throw out a slash and burn and just say, like, don't run this. Uh, but I don't think we got that yet. Posting on the GNG product, don't do it. Uh, three scoops? Yeah, three scoops. Hey, hello, Jeremiah, how's it going? What cards do you have last set? Last set, um, it's a really funny thing. You'd imagine I would also remember what cards I had each set. And it's a bit easier because I do motion graphics, so I have to remember a bit more about the cards. But if you ask me, like, what cards I had three sets ago, honestly, can't tell you, which is so messed up. We had uh, Slash and Burn Agriculture. We had Cyber Sand Harvester. We had Tree Line, and we had B1001. Those were the four we had on the last set. What did I have the set before that? Zato City Grid, I think. Oh, shit. Like, it's all hard. It's hard to say. I think we got Wayland stuff. Zato City Grid, I'm pretty sure. Hostile Architecture. Kimberlite Field. And End of the Line. Yeah, End of the Line. I knew we were shooting the Canadian boy, and that was the one they gave us. One of the scoops, so, like, I also don't know how... The scoops are given out like if people are tuned in and so the community team thinks like oh this would be a really good scoop for uh for like this person because of what they talk about their play style stuff like that i know before i've been asked so one time michael many moons ago asked like hey we're thinking of giving you would you be excited to like scoop some like shaper cards and i said probably not the best person to be doing that and so michael's like okay we'll get you something else and then i think we got some criminal cards and it was it was great it was fine it was good this year i think they're a bit behind schedule so i was just given something which i think is totally fine but one of the cards i got is a very very cute choice um which i actually really appreciate and i don't know if it's intentional or not but it's a very cute choice so it's cool you had anarch audrey oh yeah last year yeah you had anarch and audrey and banner you had banner Play with vibes only. No math, still loving it. Oh, Cody, how's it going? Yeah, I could see that. It's weird because with Bellacho, there's like some math that shows you, but then there's a lot of math that it doesn't show you. I wonder if the game would be worse if it had an option that just showed you the outcome, but some outcomes are random. So they would just do question mark and maybe show you a range. I think there's a lot of people that would appreciate that, that are playing vibes based. I don't think if you like really want to push it, you should be playing vibes based, based though. You got Whalen twice in a row? Yes. But like classically on this channel, like we've never spoiled an NBN card. And I think this is cool. It's like if you ask me what cards I'd be most excited to spoil, it is generally criminal and Wayland. Uh, so I think that's like really well done. Anything to do with beans? <laughs> I have a Bellagio problem. There he is. Ian self-reporting. It's okay. Welcome to the worst possible Bellagio support group where we're all going to encourage each other to play Bellagio. So you have Wayland again. Oh, I cannot confirm nor deny. Uh, but that'll be soon, which is really, really exciting. Uh, so yeah, yeah, stay tuned. It's fun. I just got them last night, so I'm still like thinking about what we want to do with them. Uh, we got some motion graphics to do. We do the same video every year, but it's fun because editing to music is fun. It's that simple. Okay, back to this deck idea. So I worry that we might have slipped away a bit from this deck idea because I'm only on a single Maven. Uh, I don't know how consistently we're going to get it and how good it's going to be, but that's probably fine because this card is kind of butt in the early game. For what it's worth, it's actually not that bad if you can get to three strength relatively quickly because three strength means you get through hopefully drafter for only two credits. Four credits is not that much more cursed than Shaper usually does, uh, but that's not terrible as long as we're using our poison vials. I put one propeller in here. 
just because I think some people are playing wraparound and we're just absolutely messed up if we can't break wraparound at all. Uh, there is some meta considerations of certain cards you want to kind of imbue, uh, what's it called, like an AI based list with. Uh, I would think VSA is the other weak spot in this deck, but I'm just not going to play around it. I'm not going to play a code gate. You probably could. And maybe that you should have Maven as a backup breaker or some late game opportunity, and then you just have some early game stuff. But our early game stuff is Slap Vandal, Poison Vial, which seems kind of fine. Uh, the issue, though, is like, yeah, we just don't have a decoder. So VSA is going to be really annoying. Wraparound is going to be annoying. If a Hordem is triple advanced, we Slap Vandal it. So that's not the end of the world. Oh, no, we can't because it's an AI. Let's just not worry. Those are not real things that happen. Like, we can't break a Swordsman. That's not a real card you have to worry about. Other things, the deck that Daijin posted didn't have SMC. I think SMC is obviously very good in Shaper and in, in, in general in our Asana, so fantastic. Then we're on two Flux Capacitor, which is a Trojan that's cheaply installed that allows us to charge one of our cards once we break a subroutine. team. And that's really cool because that means in theory we go infinite with a Poison Vial Maven. We can break basically any ice in the format as long as we get to that spot, spot with Slab Bendel or Maven and then we get our Poison Vial charge back. Then on top of that, we have other things that we want to charge, like we can charge Nyesha, which is a card that I am playing um, because it's a card you can play. I'd argue it's fine. It gives an R&D run a sing additional access and you can continue to charge this. Uh, you can only ever remove one hosted power counter to see one additional card. We have simul chips to flicker this. But this is the sort of thing where we wanted like we had a bunch of problems to solve at the same time. We want more programs. We want run based multi access That's not brute force. And at the end of the day, it's a charge card. So I guess it's OK. I'm pretty sure we're going to have too many things to charge. So like the chance that we're going to only be charging our poison vials is probably what's going to happen. Uh, we also can charge the twinning, which I don't think you really need to. You can charge Nuka environmental testing. I don't think that's realistic, but whatever, we'll try it. And then this is the last slot, which is Mantle, which is the stealth card in our list as much as we have no stealth synergy. And I think this is really strange. The first time I put this deck together, I dropped the twinning and I played a Chezva. And Chezva's really good because, mind you, we're playing a prognostic Q-Loop engine. And I decided we can just save influence and play a bunch of mantles and get them out really cheaply. And then use the mantle to boost on the runner's turn, on the corporation's turn, to charge the twinning as much as it is a one of per deck. And then, of course, you can use mantle to fire on anyone's turn the prognostic Q-Loop. And while we have, you know, 12 hardware and about 13 icebreakers or programs, we might get there consistently. And then we also have Ds and MZ. So using Mantle to free pay the prognostic to pay the cheaper install cost on the hardware on DZ seems like a cute interaction. Fire Lily Pad on their turn. This might be cuter than it ought to be. And Mantle is like kind of a pretty mid card. Like it's not great, but we're heavily incentivized to install as many little sh weeny programs as we can to make the Maven not ass. Uh, so I ended up with Mantle, which is a card that I don't think is probably worth the slot, but we're going to try it out. Diogene was playing, um, again, Data Sucker, or Leech, excuse me, which is good. I don't know if we want to be really running Archives that much, or R&D or HQ. Like, we want to make more targeted runs, because inherently our runs are a bit more expensive, so we'll see. Into the Deaths was my SMC. Yeah, we have two of them. I think you still want all of them. I think you want all of them. But yeah, that's not that bad. And then we have Overclock for SMC. But I think you kind of want Into the Depths as well because you want to set up as quickly as possible. Mind you, run 49 cards. I don't know what to do about that. Um, if you tuned into Netrunner in like 2014, 2015, people would roast you for playing a 46 card deck. And now modernly, there's so many competitive games, uh, competitive decks that are like 50 plus and it's an issue. Hush is a great shout out. Yeah, Hush is a great shadow that I'm definitely missing. Uh, I know Diogen played Hush. I think Hush is like, also Cubon we're not playing because of slots, which is like whatever. This is arguably another really good econ card that you can get down cheaply and it's fantastic. There's also Reclaim here, which I'd rather just recharge the Poison Vial than bring the Reclaim. I think Reclaim is pretty slow and kind of clumsy, but not bad. Uh, but yeah, I think we're just going to hope that Hush is not an issue. Hush is actually super important because there's a bunch of ice that eventually becomes really hard to deal with, but it's mostly like just playing against Sokka's Worlds list. Uh, otherwise, it's going to maybe be OK. Uh, uh, maybe. That's the best I got. Slots are set on a 49 card deck. Tell me about it. Bailey, how's it going, by the way? Yeah, it, it's an issue. Um, that's why. So like, I think if we wanted to, this is the problem is if we wanted to play Hush, we'd have to make the deck more boring where we could either consider cutting a single poison vial and then playing a Hush and something else, or we can cut a prognostic, but I want to play two prognostics because I want this deck to be a prognostic deck. And I don't think we can afford to cut the twinning. Again, my original version had Chezva and then had like Q bonds instead, but this is where we are. If anyone has any ideas before we dive in, so be it. Only two lily pads, yes. Only two lily pads, only two urban art vernissages. The two urban art vernissages is a bit more defensible because we actually don't have that many Trojans. It's just the slap vandals and the fluxes. Like it's not as Trojan heavy as a lot of our other Arasana lists, as much as urban is a really good card. Two lily pad, I think is maybe okay. We need a lot of MU in this deck. So we have to actually be playing some amount of DZs as well. So an early DZ is like 
not exactly akin to lily pad but i think we wanted to diversify because we ideally want to have like seven mu so i didn't want to play three lily pad um i think a lot of the like arasana decks right now are not playing three lily pad all the time and we also have three diesel and three nuka which is a bit more card draw than most other arasana lists they're generally running like three nuka three lily pad something like that so i'm hoping that balances out uh but i could be wrong also, technically, Prognostic is like a card draw card, but Prognostic does want Lily Pad. That's true. Is this a one X Beatrice deck? Yeah, I thought it was, and I cut it because I was at 50 cards, and having a 50 card deck with Beatrice sounds really cursed. But this is not a bad deck for Beatrice because Niasha works with it, and Twinning works with it relatively well. I just worry that like we're adding a card that has a payoff on like turn eight, and there's a chance we're going to lose before turn eight because I think this deck is a bit clumsy. So if this deck is good and we can iron it down to 45 cards and we want more pressure, I think Beatrice can make sense. The problem is like Beatrice is a three click turn, right? Like install use Beatrice is three clicks. That's terrible. And it doesn't really work with prognostic. So yeah, Hush is super useful versus our process running Starlet. Santa, how's it going? I think, I'd, yeah, I think we want to hush the fun houses and the VSAs because we can't deal with VSAs. Starlets are actually kind of okay because we can maven them cheaply and then poison bile the rest of them. That's not the end of the world. But I'm more worried about fun house, which is annoying, and VSA is a problem because we have no good way to break VSA, period. We try a game with the original deck to show the difference. I'm pretty sure we have something more solid. Uh, I can, yeah. I'm just like, so this deck to me is missing so many fundamentals. Like, just three diesels is not enough card draw. Uh, oh, you're playing Bio too, which like I think Bio is okay. It, it is whatever. But like the two conduit I don't like, the no SMC I don't like because we're playing the top deck. So I think this deck might like unfortunately frustrate me. I think we can give it a shot. We probably have enough time. But this is the sort of deck that I know I'm going to be bitter at when I'm just looking at my hand and being like, how do I play this? Which I try and avoid because I'm not very nice. <laughs> but I'll give it a shot, Daishin. Yeah. Every Shaper deck is a 1x Beatrice deck. It can be. Loving every bit of this deck. This might be terrible. This might not be good. I think it's clumsy. I think we might want to have regular breakers. I'm worried that we're just not going to get Maven down. I think the deck is going to, like, the game is going to be over before Maven is worth getting down, but I think it's really good. Oh, no, I'm playing Bellatro. Let us know how it is, Veronica. It's really fun. If this wasn't a Maven deck, I'd consider a single tree to cycle all the hardware into something more useful. So it's actually kind of hard, because Poison Vial destroys itself when it's empty. So... NSG just like the last hardware is they've put out the last programs they all trash themselves with empty which is such a bummer but maybe that's a nice way for us to forget that charge is annoying um but yeah like I actually don't know if we want a world tree that much we'll see but yeah I see it I, I would consider world tree in this for sure let's give this a shot our best matchup would just be like mid-range HP uh, there's a lot of really bad matchups like I had a Parisha in here which like it's you can argue that any amount of like cheap programs is reasonable for a maven deck uh, but we don't have it. We have no tech against assets. Like there's a lot of things that we are really weak into that is just going to be the way that we build decks here where we have an idea, we try it, and then we try and make it a bit wider once we realize what works and doesn't. Going well, visiting New York, which has been super fun. Token Earth Station deck to the CEO. Oh, so you read the New York CEO. I saw your Earth Station deck with like, um, what's it called? Public, the transport monopoly, or whatever. It seemed kind of cool. Earth Station is weird. It is obviously weird. Um, I think paying six a lot of times makes sense, but yeah, it looked cool. Had some fun exploring some unexplored areas and cards. <laughs> had some unexplored cards in New York. Hopefully you had a good time. The event in New York City had like a lot of people traveling in for it. It looked really fun. It's called Meister. Uh, it's just a synonym for Maven. Don't think too much about it. We say Meister a lot in like Slovenian and by Slovenian, I mean Slovenian borrowing heavily from German. If only E3 feedback implants were still a thing. Yes. I think I looked up some old Maven lists and like I know Cody had one posted and it's like, yeah, you would play Maven with E3 back in the day. Arguably Poison Vial can be better than E3. It's just obviously limited in charges as much as infinite flux. But you know what I mean? Your station is weird, but yeah, lots of fun to work with the constraints. The fact that it's like so hard to play Spin Doctor in the deck is such a bummer. And I'm surprised that your deck is not it's playing Slash and Burn, but has no archives recursion unless I missed something. But it has nothing. If I, again, didn't miss something, which is like tricky. It's a really weird combination of cards. I'm pretty sure my craft for coffee is like all cracked. I think coffee was coming out and I don't know from where. And that's not a good thing because it's hot. Ognic vibrations. Cool. Cool. All right. How is that possible? 
Well, that's a good way to boost the stats. How can you queue up for a custom biotics game in standard? Huh? Oh, he left the game. Whoa! So it just, if you enter a game without anything, undefeated on Jade. <laughs> if you enter a game right as they leave, it is a custom biotics deck? Whoa! Never seen that. Hey, Fix, how's it going? CB is a default ID. What a world we live in. That's really funny. For those who are not familiar, custom biotics is a 22 uh, influence HB identity that just says you can't play Jinteki cards. Uh, it's. Can be fun. It's thematic. Yeah, undefeat on JNet. Let's go. I wanted to play Slash and Burn, so I did. But yeah, it's neat for fast advancing at the end. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, the Tempo 4 2. I think this is something that caught me by surprise because we played the decks of the week, I think, last week, and we ended up fast advancing by doing Install, Oaktown, Audacity, Slash and Burn in the other order. Uh, and that was like kind of neat. Right, like fast advancing four twos as expensive as that hand is, uh, is kind of a cool thing. But I think I want to play more slash and burn to like tempo score at four twos, where you do like install advance advance slash and burn punishment, something like that. How exactly would it be broken if it lied for Jindeki cards slash gen? It wouldn't be broken, it was just a thematic thing because in the lore, HB and uh, Jinteki are competing, uh, you know, corporations that are trying to vie for that sort of space of cheap labor. So Jinteki's offering clones while HB's uh, offering buy rides. So it wouldn't be broken. Uh, I like you could just have a blank 22 with no text and it honestly probably would be reasonable, but it was just more thematic. It was very early Netrunner. Lowest in the alphabet? There's no way. No, it starts with HB, doesn't it? But also like Ag Infusion and all that other stuff. I wonder if that counted for a win for your deck stats. It probably did. It's going to be sick for the write-up. Yeah, 100% win rate on JNet. Undefeated. Let's go. I'm not playing you as a Corp again. It seems each time I bring an ID that you hate the most. <laughs> so sorry, Fix B. There's a very set list of decks I don't like. Unfortunately, Mwanza is like a thing right now, um, which like, ugh. Uh, but yeah, I don't like AOT decks. I don't like... R plus is okay. We don't have a good R plus matchup, but it's fine. Um, I don't know. No one gets upset when you play PD, right? Like, that's the issue. But I know what you mean. I don't want to make you feel bad about the stuff you like. It's fine. I'll be upset about it. I love using Slash and Burn for earlier tempo work, but at the moment, I don't think there's typically the defensive support for expending two points for Archives if you aren't winning off of it. Yeah, and that's the whole idea, Santa, that I'm hoping the new set, like the Wayland ID, to me, the expendable thing and like that Acid Intimidation or whatever it's called, Armed Acid Protection, it seems clearly that Wayland's going to get some benefit from face-up cards. So either that you don't want to touch them or it can be a better on-tempo play. Oh, this is cursed. This is potentially quite cursed. If this is like pure Wayland Glacier, like uh, Sokka built to last, not only is the game going to be 55 minutes, which I don't love, um, but this deck does have ice that outscales even the biggest Maven we can make. Because uh, we don't have... Uh, like, this is a matchup that's really bad into... Oh, cheers! into classic Arasana with Hush, but into our Arasana, I don't think it's gonna be good. Speaking as a lap player, yeah, you just play your one your one neutral hardware. We can't always play PD. <laughs> Sorry about the Mwanza. My old jank deck made a vicious comeback. It seems mean. Like, that's my issue with Monza. is like the best way to deal with it is not. And I don't like cards that just, the best thing to do is not interact. Hush and Leech solve those matchups. I don't think Leech does, but Hush does. We'll see what kind of deck this is. Did it maul? It kept. Okay. Evie's waving. Hey, Evie. How's it going? So let's talk about face checking here. If we face check and it's um, a Winchester, that's not the worst. If it's an Afshar. Yo, Sophie. You posted a message, I think, in the wrong Discord about running events in Vermont, and I, my answer is yes, please. Uh, I don't know if you saw it or not, because I saw it really late. You can pin all the Mwanza nowadays. Yes, you can. But I think that's the only smart counterplay to it in the entire format. And I don't think having a meta where it's like you play pin all or nothing is not healthy. I don't think we need a face check here. This is definitely an ugly hand, uh, mind you. We have 13 programs. So two fluxes are useless. 
The slap bundle means we can charge, but we don't really want to do it. So the next play that we have is like into the depths, slap bundle, uh, sorry, DZ slap bundle into the depths, which slap bundle doesn't get through a lot of Wayland Ice. Stavkas are also really annoying at seven strength because slap doesn't beat it. So like here we can consider into the depths in R&D to force a res. Uh, it kept, so getting pressure on HQ is kind of reasonable. I'm going to go for it. This is a bit more aggressive than I probably want to be, but whatever. So using this as an economy card, it's not great. Okay, so this is not fantastic. So at least here, we're going to only lose one credit. So we'll Arasana. In theory, we should have said no priority. We'll flux, put it here. Sorry, slap bundle. We'll break a subroutine. We'll break the end the run. Uh, so this looks like it might be the, the grind from worlds, which is not great because it's a very slow deck. So we can't really lean forward to install a program. There's no cards to charge. So it's just an econ card. That's a reasonable trash when their money's not good. If we charge HQ, so four credits, they can raise a tree line, a Winchester. Winchester would be really bad because it targets two things of ours. So I think we just draw up. Uh, we have very little like permanent table money, like telework is better into this matchup, uh, but getting down to early environmental testing would be pretty good. Hopefully this is a bit more of a fast deck. Okay, they advanced it, so it could be a second NGO front. On five credits, we can charge it. They can be on 10 credits. If there's a Winchester there, we get really blown out. And we have an SMC in hand as much as that's not particularly doing anything on this board state. So we can maybe draw once. That gives us some reach here. We install it for free if we want to. Uh, they can over install their message chest, so, but it probably doesn't want to. It's a tree line, okay. So we're gonna challenge this. We're gonna do Arsana, Slap Vandal. Again, this thing can be advanced out of, out of range, which is a problem. Our DZ has made its money back. We'll break the one subroutine. And assuming this is an NGO here. Yeah, okay, so two NGOs are out. Uh, we can draw and install SMC credit. It's going to gunk up, not all our MEU, but you kind of want to get SMC down while the DZ doesn't eat his own trigger. But here now, if it installs, trashes their ice to trash our slab vandals, we're a bit upset about it. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, uh, we do not scale into a three ice remote server that quickly. The most we can do is like put some pressure on and slow it down. I don't know whether like where we have to find the line between setting up. Our, obviously, our economy here is pitiful. Yeah, so this is where we're cooked. This is why you need hush. Because inherently, we, our deck has almost no way of dealing with seven strength tree line. Like we might be beat by from the onset. Uh, okay, so upgrade. So bio vault, we're assuming we have no pinholes. If we nuke it, we go down to one credit. That's not very good. I slapped the DLC general. Does it belong to the organizer channel? No, I don't know. I thought you would post it in like the New England uh, chat. If we want to propel it through it, we could. We could. But once a bio vault is done, we're in a really, really bad spot. Uh, we can see the top of R&D. So if we do Nuka and hit Nuka, we're on one credit. We have two clicks. We have seven cards in hand. It's not particularly good. I think we just click for this. It's not great. Yeah, this is bad. I kind of want to scoop here because I think we legitimately can't beat this if this is the deck we think it is. Post in both New England Discord and GLC. Fantastic. Yo, Sophie, can you recommend a game store? So the problem is I want to play Arkham, but the release date for the new campaign in, uh, in Canada is like the 15th, but it came out last week for uh, America. So it's actually not that hard to drive down to Vermont to like Burlington or to Plattsburgh, but like every board game store I called there, they're out. So I don't know if there's like a board game store that I'm missing somewhere on the north border, but like I would travel to America to bo go buy Arkham two months early or two weeks early, excuse me. Okay, we really need a way to move these around. This seems quite bad. So we have overclock SMC. This card could be an agenda. We could force a res here. We're assuming that's a buy vault. So we could do env testing overclock HQ. We'd have five credits. If it's a Winchester, it's really bad. Like games? Many. Like this one. <laughs> so this is how we get out of this. This was the thing that I, I also struggle with the deck is like the deck has creative commission and dirty laundry, but it doesn't have sure gamble in it. 
Um, I think a lot of our side of decks don't play Sure Gamble. I love the consistency of early Sure Gamble, but now we're like really locked from environmental testing slowing us down. So we can do environmental testing. Should we just play daily cast? No, not at all. No, not at all. So we can do environmental testing, run, install the flux capacitor on something. It's not fantastic. And then it's going to be stuck on the table, which means our MU is entirely full. If we do environmental testing overclock, like what are we pulling here? Maven is now going to be three strength. So as long as we can get a, a what's it called? A poison vial where at some spot. I think we probably just in, like go as slow as we can, like something like that. And now if we crack a Maven, it's four strength, which if we have a poison vial, we actually break Winchester on HQ for two credits. That's not too bad. Have we got a leech or turbine to get around seven strength tree line? We don't. Uh, turbine doesn't work because it doesn't boost AIs. Oh, oof, that's bad. Oh, we could have reacted there. That's okay though. I don't think I would have. Yeah, maybe. Um, so yeah, there's actually no good way to boost this lab vandal. Um, leech is the only way, but this deck they ice up archives and they purge out. Like you'd rather play hush than tree line in this matchup. Okay, um, I think we're just going to Nuka and then Overclock HQ. We have a Poison Viral that doesn't really help on this board state. We can install a Mantle. And I think we have two clicks left here. So is the Mantle going to do anything? <laughs> is the Mantle going to do anything? I'll DM you about the ones I know about. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we called Quarter Staff and they were really nice, but they were like, all ours are accounted for. So now the poison vial comes down, environmental testing almost gets there. And so the idea is that we can break the mess in the chest foe uh, relatively cheaply, right? Because the poison vial comes down, then we run, we install flux from hand, uh, we lose three on encounter, and then we use mantle to break a subroutine and we don't have to break the other one. Actually, this is reasonable. We can get access on top of R&D. Yo, Blurby, Ice Cover, Big Rain, Strat to beat tree line. Yeah, but they just advance it once more. Like it advances it once, but uh, we should just hush it. This is a really tough, tough start. So I don't think we poison vial this. I think we just do run flux. We break one. Oh no, but we want to duck it. Oh, but as soon as we install the flux, we go over. This is where he crushes me. I think he, I think he got this. Yeah, core stuff's probably the closest. I think so. They're nice too. Hey John, we're not actually doing some stealth. We're playing like mantle uh maven. So we're playing stealth cards, but not stealth breakers, which we probably could honestly. So okay. So we need to run through this. The mess of chest, but we don't want to lose the three on encounter. So we need to install something. As soon as we install the poison vial, though, and then we install our flux capacitor. I think we just install the poison vial and run for a single. Technically, it doesn't. It shouldn't use the counter here because we have no money. But this is now mental giving us one credit worth the value of turn. Like we're building an engine. This is kind of OK. Wrong account? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's neat, huh? All right, so message has to lose three, doesn't matter. We're pretty sure this is a buy vault. So now that we're going to go ahead and use the slap vandal so to break with the mantle credit. So we're at least throwing a single access. This is where like a Nashia comes down and then a second ice is going to be really embarrassing for us. That's better. There you go. Are you playing the new Arkham? Oh, sick. Seemed important. Okay. And so next turn, when we install the flux capacitor while running, we'll crack up to seven. Uh, if it doesn't make a lot of money, we can consider running HQ. We definitely want some sort of something. The more it draws and doesn't put the remote server, the more we want to pressure HQ. And Rising 4 probably eats all its money, which is great. Yeah, okay, cool. So three credits means we probably can get into HQ. It would be Afshar or Tree Line. So I think we just send it HQ here. Because we're going to use the Lily Pad money and we'll charge. You can overcharge. Like, that's a cool thing about charge. Poison Vial can go up, Propeller can go up as well. Uh, charging the Propeller is actually a bit reasonable. I just wish we had a way to move the Slap Vandal around. So we'll run HQ to start. Uh, will we say no action? Yeah, because we can respond after it. Because if it doesn't res, it's not like Flux Capacitor does anything. Because Flux Capacitor is not on pass. It's on uh, on break. No further. Okay. So here we'll use Arsana to install Flux here to gain 9 credits. 
it sees a Pharos, that's another one that we can't really beat if it's triple advanced. Uh, so unfortunately now we can lily pad, which is a bit rough. So we probably want to do environmental lily pad, which is again, a lot of money. Uh, so I would draw up into an SMC or something. 20 is good. We haven't seen the above the law yet. So we probably do the environmental testing. We probably want here, which is only a two of in the deck, unfortunately, our, uh, Vernissage. SMC, we want to get down after the environmental testing. So I think we do environmental testing and then we're actually getting towards Maven. But my time machine. Now, yeah, we're taking it slow and trying to go in order of to the best of our ability. We'll probably play TSK before Hemlock while we wait for Dream Eaters to reissue to the new boxes. Got a few friends in Arkham, so we're taking them through Dunwich. Oh, okay. Take your time. There's no need to rush. I just didn't know. Like, I don't mean... There's enough content that you don't have to go quickly. Are you playing Hemlock yet? No, because it's not released in Canada. We have to wait two more weeks, which sucks for someone who wants to make content. So we're trying to drive down next weekend to Vermont to pick up the thing, but I don't know where to buy it. Because the game store, quarter staff there, doesn't have it. Can you buy Arkham at, like, Target? Like, where do you go? Like, Walmart? Not that I want to, but, like, push comes to shove. Okay, our MU's gunked up. It has nine credits. We know just one card in hand. We have to deal with the remote server Biovault sooner than later. But if that was a Biovault, I assume it would advance that instead of advancing or clicking for credits. But that's an easy thing to, to miss. Excited to play Alessandra as the new Arkham set. Interesting way to develop parlay mechanics. Yes, I think Alessandra looks really good. I built last night an Alessandra deck, which I'll test out, and uh, the the Handyman, who I was not very excited to build. And I think... <laughs> uh, I think... Uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it. So another MU card would be good. So we can do Flux SMC. Sorry, Lilypad SMC. We might as well draw ones. Okay. So I think we do Lilypad SMC. It draws a card. Okay, another mantle we want to install next turn to get the DZ value, but we're basically getting, like, we're kind of mavened out at this point. Because then we overclock for a maven, and our maven will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 strength, which, like, almost is good enough. How can you find your Arkham Horror content? Jimmy the Lad, it's not out yet, but youtube.com slash at, like, at symbol, Velma's Diner. Uh, I think we just click for credit here, and then our turn, next turn is, like, mantle... See what we draw. Probably should get down 20 soon. Probably have to call to get it. I did. Uh, they just said that they would order it in and then call me if it comes in. But I don't think it'll be like this Friday. And then if it's not this Friday, I probably should just wait a week, which is a bummer. Because like road trips to Burlington are nice. I don't think you have luck at Walmart. Okay. One of the board game podcasts. How's it going, Lava? I listen to has a semi recurring segment called Screw You Canada. That comes every time Canada winds up with board game stuff weeks later than everyone else. Yep. It's pretty consistent. So this card was advanced. Burlington is the loveliest time of the year. David, yes, more Arisana. We're trying to play Maven. Okay, so Tree Line is seven strength. This a card in the remote server is not threatening to be a real agenda unless it's ab uh, above the law, which means we want to delay the twinning, but we want to crack environmental testing. I grew up in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. Oh, no way. And you try to get my friends into Arkham. It's really good. Yeah. Um... I grew up in Burlington, Ontario, so Burlington, Vermont has always been like a bit of an antagonistic relationship, but it is totally lovely. So if we want to get through Propeller through this, we use all the counters. Which is a bummer because then we can't charge it anymore. We'd have to flicker it, but we technically break this for one credit. Uh, I don't know what this upgrade is, but this is likely to not be the last NGO front, more likely to be an agenda. This outermost could be the Pharos, which if that's the case, it's pretty bad. Yeah, core staff games I've been to before. They're really nice. They're really nice on the phone. I haven't been in years, but we went to a Netrunner event there many, many moons ago, uh, like six, seven years ago. It was fantastic. Maybe even more than that. Okay, so we can start by installing a mantle. Draw a card. Okay, so now if we crack the SMC, we actually gain the money from environmental testing. So how big will our Maven be? Our Maven will be one, two, three, four, five, six. We can actually Maven the tree line. I think we got it. It's a June. <laughs> uh, I'd let you have it. No worries. Oh, they're very nice. I think we actually overclock HQ. No, if it's a Winchester, it's really bad because I have to deal with it. I think we overclock archives. Otherwise, we can just overclock the remote server. That's probably better. But Maven's going to cost us seven credits. We can use the mantle credits, so it's a bit cheaper. I think we overclock the remote server. 
And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seventh will be from hand. Yeah, I think we're okay. I did no math here. Uh, there's a one border control on the list if it is Sokka's list. Uh, I'll say no action. No further. Okay. So here we have to crack SMC. We don't have to use the mantle here because we're going to use the mantle on whatever. So we'll pull a maven. One, two, three. So it's come in at six strength. We'll use our Asana. We'll install a flux. We're out of MU. Oh, we're out of MU! Oh, no. I'll just jack out. All right, well, we'll just jack out. We learned that we made a mistake. Ugh. So we need to get one more strength. Now the SDSs are really annoying, I thought. So th now this is the issue is we're dra drawing for the one last copy of DZ. And even then, that's going to be a short-lived thing because this. Oh, and Flux is unique. Oh, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now here we can run HQ. That's the best we have. If it had an agenda, that would go into server one. But I think we want to run HQ here. I think we have to risk that to be the above the law and not install the twinning. Obviously, we can install the twinning here. So let's run HQ. And then go from there. This charges a propeller or poison vial, and we're breaking this for free. Like any ice, this is we break for free. Like it's an Afshar. Okay, with that one, we don't break for free. You got us there. Uh, so we can let this fire, or we can do Maven for free. Choose an installed card to charge. Genuinely, yeah, charging this is going to be really important. Leech, I know Leech, but they're going to purge out. Right, like this deck goes slow enough that it ices up everything and purges out, and I don't think the leech is worth anything. The leech is, I think we'd be better off with an actual program, because like we're not fun running archives. I think in this meta, no. In other metas, maybe. Uh, draw. Cool. Third mantle. Need more MU. No, we don't have hush. <laughs> we're on three prognostic, three poison vial, a twinning. That's all the MU. Probably better not to break the ETR. We lose two credits no matter what. If we break it, we get a free propeller. So I think we do break it. Where are you going to use them on SMC? I used the overclock credits first, which was technically correct. So I messed up and was charitable the way I messed up. Because I used the overclock credits first so we can use the mantle on the HQ run. If I used the mantle first, we would have wasted overclock credits. So I think we want to go for the axis. Flux gives you the charge either way. No, Flux only gives you the charge if you break... Oh, you're saying if you broke the uh, lose two credits and end the run? Yeah, that's true. But I think the Axis is maybe something. Kagoslav, Maven with Monkey Wrench. I think you can consider it. I don't know if it's worth the influence. But it definitely does the thing that you want it to do. Yeah, we need to play more DZs. I, I can't believe we set up this quickly and now we're struggling. Because uh, like getting down our R&D Axis, like, this is really rough. We can't actually do much unless we draw a DZ. That's good. Ish. I don't know if that's an agenda. If we lose our Maven, it's really bad. So we want a Simul Chip. That's not a Simul Chip. We have extra programs. It's not going to be the end of the world. So we can install two resources. If one of them gets trashed above the law, so be it. So it always seems like Ari wants Hush. This is one of the biggest matchups. I think against HB, it doesn't matter. But I hear it. It is a Ferris. Okay. Are we not contesting? We can't break a 7 strength tree line. Oh my god, we could have. Yeah, we could have just ran it. Why didn't we run it? We could have propelled it through it. Yeah, we should have contested that. This is a Bio Vault or a Virus. Yeah, that was wrong. Yeah, we should have contested that. You're 100% correct. Bummer. Okay, we'll turn that to hand. I don't think there's hostiles in this deck. So now we have to put the pressure on. So we're going to install twinning and charge twinning every turn. And then we have to lock at the top of R&D, which is possible. Um, the deck obviously has three spin doctors, but yeah, we could have had that send a message relatively easily. This remote server is a bit of a bear. We want to break once a turn, uh, regardless, to be able to charge our thing. Ideally, we duck to the point that we can't can deal with this. So I think we install the twinning for one, and we just run R&D and see two cards. Oh, we can't use the urban art vernissage credits here. Okay, bummer. Uh, so I think we run R&D. We also can't charge the twinning because of the way charge works. It's uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, but if we run here, we'll have one credit. We break this for one. We're going to break this for two. So I think we should be able to get in. You can use Vernissage, yes, but it'll eat the twinning charge. 
UVs for any... No, I know you can... We, yes, we can use it to install, but it'll eat the claws on twinning, so twinning won't be able to be charged this turn. I think I don't think we overclock here. I think we just run. Install mental first. Oh, uh, maybe. I don't think we need to. I think we want to have the uh, flux here. <laughs> I think we're going to flux from hand. I got no action. But I see what you mean, yeah. So now we can always boost the mantle to... Oh, it's a tithe. That's uh, uniquely annoying. If you flex from hand using the UAV, you can then charge a twinning? Uh, yes, but we always can just boost with mantle. Oh, funny enough, actually, this deck struggles to boost. It can't boost for fun. We have no way to boost for fun. We generally should have at least own pumpable breaker. That's really goofy. Okay, so I think we are Asana the flux here. Draw a card. Okay. Yes, that was a good draw. So now we're hitting the tithe. It having a credit is not the end of the world. So we can break this for our mantle money, which drops us to one credit, which is perfect to deal with that. choose a card so we can hit the twinning i think we do hit the twinning i think we want to see three cards here you only want to boost for fun is q loop i've noticed that as an issue yes yeah q loop is the thing that we want to boost which ideally we have two and 22 uh but we want to get there message chest was an on-encounter yeah but it doesn't oh sorry you're right you're right sorry i should break with real money So I have the one on Mantle. Yeah, that was a big mistake because we want the one on Mantle so we don't lose it to Master Chess. So I'll be using that to break Mess Me. Thank you. Flexion card to 20. As long as it has a counter on it, yes. Such is charge. But like, it's cool. There's a lot of pressure. It's like every turn we could see three cards on R&D. Maybe the Nyasha is not necessary. So then I'll break, I'll break that. I'll break that now. So then we break that. Oh, uh, the subroutine fires were nothing. We were here. We would use the mental credit with the with, and so now we can see three cards here. We can't trash anything, which is a bummer. Subsidy, that's not a good draw. Colossus, that's potentially annoying. This is not. Colossus wasn't in uh Sokka's deck. Two Colossuses was definitely not in Sokka's deck. Okay, that's something. Uh, I think we need a pressure HQ. So this is a different deck. I have to keep that in mind. We can install the DZ for free. I think that's totally fine. I think we just do that and click for credit. We probably should draw. Uh, we need some amount of money to run the remote server. Generally, this is doing a cool thing, right? Like we have some hard ice to deal with, but like you see once this engine is up, this is turn 11. We were a bit slow. We don't know what that is. We have to run that. I'm worried this is now a uh, mana garm or something. Now we really have to run it. Does it have a hostile or an audacity? Are we just going to lose to that? We have no tricks here. Oh, we have another flux. That's fine. So that's probably the Hordum. So this could be the last NGO front. I think no matter what, we definitely consider running it. So what do we return? So if we return the slap handle to hand, we install it to draw a card. Pharos is broken for two credits on poison. Uh, the issue now is that we have too many things to install during a run. Uh, tree line we can't beat unless we leave this and install two programs, which we can do. Oh my god, that is so cool. So I think there's a chance we don't bounce this. We install mantle, drawing a card, and then we run install flux. We break this for we would have three credits. You can beat it with mantle. Yeah, we have to install both of these. I think we actually can charge a tree line, which is pretty goofy. Break tree line for one credit with propeller. I think we want to break tree line for two credits with Maven because using propeller counters is a bit expensive. Mark, how's it going? Because we will actually be on Maven on seven if we install these two breakers. So I think we start with this. Simon, she was good. I don't know what's in the remote server. Again, we've seen two NGO fronts. The question is whether we're going to beat a Mana Garm, but I'm pretty sure if it reses a Mana Garm, it might not have credits to score out. Maybe it will. So we have now four credits to work with as much as we can overclock. 
I think we do overclock. That puts us on five, six, seven, eight. We break this for two, this for two, uh, which is mantle, mantle. I think that's probably the play. Yeah. Uh, this being 10 strength will be an issue again. Hush is kind of cool. So we'll use. I'd rather Arsana on the Pharos, right? Yeah. Arsana, Flux, Pharos, uh, Maven, break for two. Doesn't matter which one we break. Uh, we should be using the overclock money sooner. Actually, no, in case it's a Mana Garm. Uh, we'll charge here. I think the Poison Vial. Then done. Then we'll Poison Vial. Breaking that for free is pretty cool. Wouldn't you flux into tree line since it's the, the, the that's the invested one? I don't know. I think this one's more expensive. Maybe you're right. I don't think it's going to matter in the long run. I don't know if it's going to matter. So we still have four credits. So we can double click Mana Garm and still trash it if it is a Manny. Uh, I don't know what else it could be. And we know the next two cards on R&D are Colossus Colossus. We're pretty sure this is a Hordem. If it triple advances the Hordem, we can't break it. Right? Like, all the bad ice is in this deck for us. <sighs> Last NGO front. Okay. So it has more money. That makes the Hordem make more sense. And it's a Mavirus. Okay. So the this is why I don't like relying on... What's it called? So we wasted four credits there. That's fine. Um. So no shuffle. So we know it's Colossus into Colossus. Running HQ. No, I think we just nuke a credit. Oh, there's a prognostic. There's the Nyasha. So prognostic means we can use mentals on th our turn. Yeah, we definitely want a way to boost on, on their turn. But no matter what, we can see three cards. All right, 15 credits. I do think this is a, a Hordem. Hordem is an issue. Urban Art will return the Flux. So Hordem is two credits. This is credits, but we have to be able to duck the mess in chest for credit. So our limited economy is going to maybe catch up with us. So we know the top of the deck is a Colossus. So I think we actually don't run R&D here. I think we run HQ. We know there's one Colossus in hand, and I think that's all we know. But unless it does draw, draw, jam, we want to contest the hand sooner. So we can install Prognostic for free to know the top of the deck. Uh, that just gives us a way to like use Mantle to charge the twinning. So if we run HQ here, we boost one from Pocket, one from Mantle, get an access, C2. We can flux to charge. Yeah, this seems fine. And we want to get the simul chip down. Look at the top two of the stack. So it's nuke into simul chip. Is that going to be remembered? Oh, remembers in the log. Thank you, Rahi. You're the best. So we have to maven this. So maven break for one from here. Uh, we'll break the end of the run. One from here, one from pocket. Just so that the subroutine here doesn't matter. Oh, sorry. My bad. We have to uh, do this before we break. So Nuka, so we'll do Arasana for Flux on here. Draw on card. Oh, yeah, so now we know what's on top of the deck. A simul chip? Oh, that's sick. Oh, that's really, really good that we know it's a simul chip. So that's a really cool interaction, too, is that we can draw to break it. So now we know the top. Lovely playing Arasana. Like, Lilypad with Prognostic is so fun because of that reason. I totally forgot about that interaction. So break two. So we'll do break the end of the run one. And then one from pocket. Choose an installed card. Uh, we'll probably end up, like, we can charge the propeller. We can charge the poison vial. So far, we're not being taxed on the poison vial. Yeah, we'll Q-loop the simul chip on, on uh, its turn. So I think we'll charge the propeller here. Nah, poison vial, whatever. So then we get an access. We have no credits to trash, which is a bummer. This is where, like, you consider playing Chesva. So... Oh, we could see all of the hand. We should have charged the twinning. That's okay. A cat, government, Colossus. Okay, so there's one unknown card. All right, so we can install a simul chip from hand here. And then we can do credit, install a simul chip on their turn, charging the twinning. The simul chips let us refresh the mantle and get card draw. It also allows us to install cards as much as they'll be free, so not really. So I think we'll just install this for free. And then we'll just do credit. Uh, they might it might trash the flux, which is a good reason to have simul chip on the table. Also, we want to on their turn make sure we're using a mantle to pull a simul chip from the top of the deck. Let me move my face to a place that makes more sense. Cool, it's doing its thing. 
Advance, advance. Okay. Uh, now we're cooked because we cannot break a horde of Monarchy, period. <laughs> We just can't. We don't know how to break a horde of an R&D. Because uh, everything we have in AI. Loop the loop. Darian, how's it going? Yeah, so we're getting hosed by all the ice that we said doesn't exist. So this is a horde, which has really good subroutines, let alone we cannot be broken by an AI. We don't have any way to break this whatsoever. Don't forget a Q loop before using Simul Chip. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Is Polongi maybe worth it? I'd rather just have a decoder. Right? Like, even a stealth decoder is really good. Like, we probably should just have one Penrose because then we can boost on their turn. So, on their, on its turn, excuse me, we're going to do this for Mantle. We'll install the Simul Chip from the top of the deck. Then we'll Simul Chip. Uh, and because something was trashed, we can get the Flux and we have to put it on HQ. We think it's an Aket or a Colossus. So, now the problem is we charge the twinning third Simul Chip. Imagine you had Hush. I know. But I don't know what we cut. Like, do we cut a prognostic? Maybe we cut a poison vial because I don't think we need three poison vials. I think it's likely we don't need three poison vials. Choose a target here. Uh, Yeah, draws us a card, gives us two credits. But like we're existing on the beautiful zero credit economy. Did it draw at all? Advance, install. Advance, install. What was the first click? Oh, two advance. Okay. So this is a horde and we can't break it. So we just have to lock the remote server and assume that we can run it every time, which we can't. If it triple advances the Pharos or double advances, we're in a bad spot. Fewer vials seems fine. Just need to get one out and keep charging it. Yeah. I don't think you play uh, the, the, the arms dealer, but I think fewer vials is totally fine. So here we can just like, in theory, prognostic off the top rope. But we're in a really bad spot that we're going to get locked out. So we need to get accesses to pressure. But the fact that this is a horde means we, there's no amount of accesses. Even just like an like all the ice in this deck is terrible. We can't break a 10 strength Pharos. We can't break a nine strength three line. Like this is the most MU we can have. The biggest or maybe can get the seven. We can't break a quad advanced Pharos. Like we're just absolutely cooked. Dust, uh, what's the deck about? It's a Maven deck that's running Prognostic uh, and then Poison Vial with uh, Flux to go infinite. But yeah, we're now almost nearly locked out of every single server. So the best we can do is run HQ, see the one unknown card. I think that's what we do here. Top of the stack, into the depths Diesel. Yeah, we need another DZ. But I just, I think most matchups, you need to get 7 Strength Maven, that's it. So we could install from hand here. I don't think we have a really big reason to. So we literally, the only thing we can do here is we can prognostic to pay a mantle to fail, revealing it into the depths off the top of the deck. Breach server will only see, we're locked from R&D. So like the twinning char charges are not that important. Okay, okay. So this is probably Colossus. Uh, I don't think there's much we have to do here. I think we just install the simul chip. What's underneath uh, diesel? Yeah, this is really bad. Uh, we're going to get cornered. Like, as long as it doesn't flood up and it just drew an unknown card. So it has a Colossus in hand. A Colossus probably on the table. Nysha helping it all. It's our first game. I don't think it's necessary. I think we're charging the twinning really consistently, but it's a charge counter. Uh, the problem is we need hush. So now we can sweep HQ uh, and hope that there's one card in there. A uh, slap handle back into hand is like kind of fine. It lowers the Maven to the most we'll get a six strength. We can always, I guess we can't panic simul chip. We have to hope it overextends and goes to sub four credits. So we'll run HQ. The flux to speed charge to 20 is nice. It's really cool. It is really, really cool. Uh, lock at the top two, it's into the depths diesel. Uh, no action. It might res here. I'm assuming it's a Colossus. No further. Okay. So then we'll prognostic to reveal into the depths. Fail. Uh, we'll see only... We have enough charges here that we can just keep doing this. Okay. Seems good. Seems good. That was important. That was nice. Neat. So we'll definitely steal that. Whatever gets trashed here, this is why we probably should have fluxed, is we'll have to simul chip it back, which is no problem. Colossus, okay. So now unknown cards coming off the top of the deck. Uh, I think we'll simul chip now, which draws a card. So into the depths, we can go back on HQ. It's just for economy, I think it's fine. But we can't break the remote server anymore, so we just have to hope it top decks poorly. King Booty, I'm on the edge of my street. It's, our, our margins are so damn narrow here. 
We know the card after this is Diesel. We can install a program from our stack. I don't think we have any programs we want here. I think you start looking getting charged on the propeller. Oh, you're totally right, because that's the way we break Pharos. We can still challenge Pharos. You're 100% you're right. Because if it jams, it's probably only on 5.3s and above the law. Like, yeah, we should be charging the Pharos. We'll charge it. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Being able to sweep HQ is good, but we get 20 charges on our turn. So I think here we just do credit, credit. Uh, Diesel on top of the deck, we could draw once. It doesn't know that we don't have real breakers, right? So now unknown in hand. Two unknown. Punitive? Okay, that's fine. We always can draw to this, so we're not we're never going to die. Because, oh no, yeah, we'd have to simul chip. So before the next one goes off, we can draw. I'll ask for an action. Because we know the top is a diesel, we can't be punitive. I wasn't playing around punit uh, punitive, but we lose three. So we kept our flux, which is good. So now we're going to have to simul chip, just trash a card uh, to install to draw a card. So punitive was one of the new drawn cards, so there's only one more there. Shot suggestion the single Beatrix seems really good right now. Yes, yes. Beatrix was in the deck and we cut it. And this is exactly the board state you want to. Okay, so value punitive. So our hand is empty. Uh. All right. So how many programs do we have left? You're impossible to beat. It's so close. So now the question is how many programs we've left in our deck? Because we're at a six strength maven. <laughs> they did top deck both of them. I think that was you could tell. So we're gonna prognostic mantle for one. Uh it's an overclock, okay. No more flux caps? No. Uh, unfortunately not. So we have some work to do. Okay, let's start with Nuka. Alright, so we can get seven. We have no more flux caps, so you can't charge a propeller. We definitely just run HQ here to see a card. I don't think we want to commit the environmental testings. Uh, I don't think money's actually going to matter that much, but we could do environmental testing and just keep bouncing stuff. Oh, it almost overspent. If it rises on HQ, we have a chance of seeing R&D here. So I think we'll just run HQ here. Uh, top two of the stack. Poison Vial Creative. Poison Vial is un not unique. Imagine you have Cordyceps. Yeah, they just purge. We move it once, but like this is a Colossus, so it can be triple advanced. I hear you. Install poison vial. Yeah, okay. Okay, charge is twinning. Breach server. We don't want to use counters here because we know the whole hand is a cat Colossus and then an unknown. I think. I think. Uh okay. So now we just wanna continue contesting. I don't actually think we play the creative. I think we'd rather have what did we see? Okay, we knew that was a creative. We should have paid attention to that. Uh draw? Oh yeah, we have three dirty laundry. Yeah, not having a flux anymore is a bummer. So we have to run this. Wow, I think that's the game there. So we do the return reveal creative commission, 20 F4. Return urban art. I don't think we do. So we've seen two NGO front. Looks like GG, yeah, this might be it. So we pay Pharos for, for one credit. It eats our whole propeller, then we're out of propellers. Unless it's like a, a checkist or like a trap, right? Like this could be worst four damage. I think we just run it. Can you get into R&D? We can't because we have Veronica. We're pretty sure this is a Hordum and we only have AI breakers. And so Hordum will fire, let alone uh, we can't ever break it. If it was on three credits, we would do R&D. But unfortunately, on four, they're threatening Hordum. I think we just run server one here. Creative dirty. We knew that. Uh, so we'll do five. We'll break one. Oh, we used mantle at the wrong time. We apparently used it on our turn. I think we've been doing our timing wrong. Because that should have been refilled. We're meant to do that on its turn. We'll try and balance these out. Breaking a Ferris for one is cool. Don't worry about all the other work we did. If it just advanced this once, oh wait, Arisana, I've totally forgot we had to do this. I was like, wait a second, what are we doing? Uh, slap Vandal on the Ferris for safety, draw a card. 
Uh, then we'll break this for two. So we wasted a credit here. Breach. Send a message. Oh my. Oh, it should have had it. Hey, good game. Oh, I think I think they had it. Uh, it was a close one. I think you had the ice to lock me at. Yeah. I don't know what they pushed it. I think they have to hold it because otherwise we're going to be twinning sweeping the hand. But yeah, pushing gear all. If it just advanced the tree line once more, we can't get in. It's that simple. Just tree line on eight. Yeah, tree line on eight. I can't break. You're too, too resourceful. Yeah, uh, thank you. Decks are too finely tuned. Oh, this is the first iteration. This is not tuned. We're at 49 cards. Oh, that's very kind. Yeah, just one single advancement It on tree line puts it to 8 strength. We just can't beat it. Because the most MU we have for Maven is 7 uh, strength. That's on us. I think we should be playing another DZ or maybe even a Cyberdelia if we're getting to that point. But like, I worry we're building too greedy of a deck. But yeah, Hordum here we can't break. Uh, a Colossus at sufficient strength we can't break. Ferris we can't break besides the one propeller we did. Uh, okay, hey, cheers. Hey, cheers. Why didn't you uh, horn him? Can't break. 3x horn him. Yeah, this is a triple advance horn him. Well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw that on Centrals. We saw it on Centrals. Yeah. Thank you. Well, hey. Well, hey. Thanks for the game. Enjoy the rest of the day at work. Yeah, very nice. Can you play HQ next? What do you mean, King? Is there a zero MU program? The only zero MU program in standard cost five influence. It's a uh, consume. I'm sorry, you forget. <laughs> uh, I meant Corp. I think we're going to be just jamming this game, uh, Booty, and tuning this deck for a bit. Because I, I, like, whenever we build a weird deck, we play like once or twice and then don't get the time to iterate it. And I think there's like something fun here. So I don't think we're going to be playing Corp. Maybe today at all, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. So what worked? What didn't work? Obviously, I think there's a huge incentive to play Hush. Do you reckon we should just play two Poison File? There's no way to get it consistently besides playing another kind of subpar to influence card. 1x Beatrice, I feel like that's results-oriented thinking. Like, I honestly think cutting the Nyasha is correct. Maybe replacing Nyasha with Beatrice is like, we can argue that. But like, that matchup is obviously good into Beatrice. But I don't think a lot of other good matchups, you can spend three credits, three clicks on a Beatrice. That matchup is really, really good. Maybe we'll just try it because whatever. I don't think it's the right call, but it'll be fun. Are throwaway breakers like Euler enough with Compile maybe? So there's two issues. It's firstly, if we're going to be running throwaway breakers, I think we should just have run Penrose because we do have the, the ability to use Penrose relatively well. This is also something we can boost on our turn, which is really important if we want to make sure we're grinding mantle value. And then it's technically a stealth deck. Issues MU. So like I do think we probably play Penrose, which builds gets us a bit of breathing room. And then we have a decoder. We have a fractor. Uh, we have to play 3Ds that I'm pretty sure. But I also think maybe results oriented. This is the only matchup where you need like an eight strength Maven. Would you just want one X flex capacitor and rely on having sandwich of SMC? I don't think so. Cause I think you want it early enough. Cause it is just a good card. It's cheap. So it's really nice to start the, the, the environmental testing. Like Cubon is also a card, but we could consider playing that we're not. What kind of Freaky Friday stuff is going on? What do you mean, Bob? I'm hugely amused by the fact that we both streamed Arisana decks this week. I played a super aggressive credit denial style and you're building the net install of Doom. <laughs> I haven't caught up on the stream in a while, Bob. I'm excited to, to dive into it, though. Into the Depths seemed kind of middling. Uh, our early economy is not bad. Uh, not great. Like, I'd rather have this as Sure Gamble. Like, just having early Sure Gambles is really good. We never drew into our dirty laundries. What do you think about including Kangamata Gabali? It's extra cards and installs, but it's no influence at least. So I think that's like one of the cards that more often shows up when people play uh, Poison Vial, right? Like Boomerang, Gabali, Kangamata, stuff like that. And I don't love them because they're really, really bad on tempo. Uh, breaking a single subroutine is something we can always do with Slap Vandal at much better efficiency. So Gabali and Kangamata is basically adding like a fourth and fifth Slap Vandal, which are worse than our Slap Vandals uh, for many, many reasons with this deck. Now, that being said, there's entire shape archetypes back in the day that were based off of this. But our struggle is not breaking one more piece of ice efficiently. It's about like getting to the Doom Rig that we want to get to fast and having enough MU to do it. So I think there's lists that you could build into it. The problem is like Poison Vial isn't seeing play with Gabali because there's no good tempo way to play Gabali Kangamato, right? Would including Hush solve the problem with high strength dice? 100%. It would. But then we'd have to cut Prognostic or Poison Vial. Uh, and I think it probably would make sense to cut a Poison Vial, play Hush, and then play one more influence card. I'm going to play it like this once more, and then we'll change it. Because I think that was the worst matchup. And I don't know if we have to build into our worst matchup. 
Because I think the Hush is only good against NBN and Wayland. I don't think I want the Hush in the HP matchup or in the Jinteki matchup. Cyberdelia is okay. It's too slow. I think there's a consideration for Cyberdelia, but again, I do think that's the one matchup in the game where you want to consider having an 8 strength, unfortunately, uh, Maven. But generally, you never need more than 6, so I don't know if we need to do more Greedy MU. I wonder if this should be swapped. Like, 3 Lilypad? Maybe. I don't know. Those old decks and Haley for installs? Yeah. Yeah. I've tried Pilot, Breaker, Haley. It's just too much deck space, honestly. Yes. And Haley could do it because she did it clicklessly, right? And then you had a way to recycle them. It's much harder to get good value off Kangamata, unfortunately. Is 3x Mantle correct? I don't know. Probably not. But I don't know. It's kind of good for our engine, but it's hard to say. I think you could slim down one of these. Probably. Hush versus HB, Gatekeeper, Blade of Boarding Troll, MIC. So versus Gatekeeper, you don't care because you have Slap Vandal. Uh, but Blade of is not a real card. Border Control, 100%. MIC, medium percent. So I would say yes. But I think if we're worried about that matchup, we'd rather play Pinhole than uh, Hush. And again, maybe we could play one Pinhole, one Hush, and cut a Poison Vial. That'd be okay. But yeah, 51 cards right now is the issue. So like we could cut one Mantle, maybe. Maybe. Blade is not a real card? No, it's not. It's not a real card. It's not. Unfortunately. I will fight you with cards? No, I look forward to it. But like, for real? The only decks that are playing a Blade of Barrier in terms of like, I'm talking about competitive show me a deck with 2024 in it this is a aetf deck notice how none of these decks have 2024 in it like a blade of just totally fell off it'll probably come back at some point but like it's just not uh, a card that you have to worry about modernly if anything you have to worry about it in like yellow in nbn yo zbeck how's it going you published a cool artist on a deck uh hush against boarding control and hp is good it is it is but i feel like if we wanted one influence in that matchup i would be happy with pinhole for many reasons that i'd rather put the influence there <laughs> i've been busy with my internship it's okay hey veronica can, can i ask you an arkham rules question or is that inappropriate it's something that i got in an argument about you can okay hold on one second sorry uh arkham all right, real quick question. This is the deep one bull. But spoilers, this guy is a real annoying guy. Sorry, this won't take more than a minute. I make no promises about being correct. That's okay. So deep one bull says, it's a four, five, two, really bad stats, but you're generally not trying to kill this thing because it's just annoying. After deep one bull engages, you choose and discard one card from your hand. Not a problem whatsoever. We understand that text. Forced. After an investigator defeats another deep one enemy at any location, ready deep one bull and move it once towards that investigator's location. Okay. Say that Investigator A is at a faraway location and they defeat a Deep One. That means that the Deep One Bull will ready and move towards that Investigator. Why doesn't the Deep One Bull ready and immediately engage the person at their location? Do they or do they not? And then if they're engaged, do they move or do they not? My guess is that they do ready, engage that person, and then move away so that person has to discard a card. I just don't understand why you don't read text one at a time and then do this. Because I'm pretty sure the, the Deep One Bull never engages. Because they should be technically move and then ready. Because then they would ready at the next location and then the problem would be later on. I don't fully understand this. Because I would assume that they ready and then they engage the person, then they move. But they when they move, they disengage. Minus one vial and something else key for plus one hush and Fenris. I think I would do minus one vial, probably plus one pinhole, plus one uh, hush. That's probably what's correct. The problem is where I have a slots issue. They have an on engage trigger. Yeah. Yes. But let me double check. So do they engage the person? If they wake up at investigators B spot, do they engage them once they ready before they move? Maybe he's supposed to be distracted by you killing his deep friends. Yeah, I think there's a lot that you can argue how this should work. But like, I'm assuming as soon as it readies, it engages someone at its location and then it still moves. Part of me wanted to think as soon as it engages somebody, it wouldn't move because it was engaged. But I think you're right. I don't take any pride in that. I just want to know how it works. But I think that's how it works. That's, that seems intuitive. But my brother-in-law was convinced that he shouldn't discard a card. It definitely still moves. Yeah, that makes sense. On that note, if somebody gains aloof while it's engaged with someone, it doesn't disengage. Because aloof just means it doesn't engage. It doesn't mean it disengages. That's another tricky one. But I'm pretty sure that this should engage somebody. And then any trigger that it's on encounter should fire. Or on trigger, on engage should fire. 
This guy's a real pain in the ass. Anyways, sorry, back to Netrunner. Let me know what you think, Veronica. Correct, aloof is not automatic disengage. Yeah, that one gets people by surprise. When something gains aloof. But aloof just means it doesn't engage. Okay, we'll cut two into the depths. I think that's probably the least necessary card here. We can cut a poison vial. I'm going to try like this. I know hush makes sense. We'll get back to that. So we're still in 49 cards. We could be on 48 without Beatrice, which is probably correct. Let's try this. Cool. We'll do the news after this. Weirdly, in that particular situation, doesn't your brother-in-law discard a card anyways because of the Grim Rule? Um, maybe. But he likes to play for theme over rules as written. So the Grim Rule doesn't exactly work in his headcanon. Because the way he sees it is like, oh, that thing saw somebody and then like wants to like run at the person who, you know, harmed his kin or its kin, their kin. Bull is gendered. Uh, and so, yeah, I get that. But technically, I'm a like rules engine guy, right? So we clash on that sometimes. That one was a bit uncomfortable. I was just like, however you want to do it, I don't care. We were not doing well. <laughs> We were doing pretty poorly. I'm coming with my Plus deck if you don't add Hush. No, no, fix me. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Come up with some, uh, some good old PD. If you don't know, do the worst. He was quoting like the golden rule. The card text uh, goes against the, the rules text. The card text wins, which is not how that's quoted. That's not how you're meant to use the golden rule. Hey, your way. I could see a case where the reading and move happen at the same time because they're not separate clauses and they're instead connected by an and. It kind of depends on Arkham rules on parsing text. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is I wanted to find the Arkham's rules quote that was about do you do a sentence sentence by sentence or do you do a sentence phrase by phrase? Because you're right. If it said do this, then do that, you do them one at a time. But technically because it's one thing, it would happen all at once. Maybe. Like I could see both ways being correct. What did we swap in the end? Uh, good question. Okay, correctly is, if the Deep One Bull's force effect triggers at a location with Investigator and it moves out of that location, does it briefly engage the Investigator there? Yes. So if the Deep One Bull readies at a location before it moves, does it engage with every Investigator at the location it readied? That's exactly it, yes. Uh, what did we change? So we dropped the Into the Depths, we added a DZ, we added a Penrose, and uh, I think that's it. So we dropped two cards, added two cards. I think we added three cards. There's no history here. Uh, added DZ, dropped two run events. Added a Penrose, added to Beatrice. Well, I can tell you it won't be every investigator there. It will engage either one or zero. Oh yeah, it won't engage every investigator. and It will engage an investigator there. And because it doesn't have prey rules, it's your choice. I agree on that. I think your argument is a little loose about stuff because, frankly, they care less since the game's not competitive. I hear you and I agree with you, but that bums me out. Because the fact that I think a lot of, and we saw this, unfortunately, on stream, uh, which, like, we shouldn't rag on the Arkham team that much. Streaming is hard. Uh, they did rules wrong. And if the people designing the game and balancing the game are playing the rules engine differently than you and I are, I don't understand how the game's balanced, right? Because, like, we might inherently be making things harder or easier like it's an issue it's like the game is really complex with timing structures and like there's whole sections to describe what then means right like the rules can get really crunchy and i'd argue that 90 percent of players playing arkham don't have to deal with that and that's totally fine and cool you can just do it however you want and at the end of the day it doesn't matter because it's cooperative but if the game is going to have balance systems like the taboo list i would like to understand that we're playing the game correctly because that does have a significant change on how you want to deal with this enemy because it becomes from a nuisance to a really big nuisance and that actually has a big change i think arkham's a little loose excuse me yeah yes me too I'm a bit fluey, so I'm not 100%, but I'm fairly confident it will still engage someone briefly there, and people in the Mythos Bots Discord agrees. Thank you, Veronica. I'll do some more research after. I was doing it quickly on the phone on a Sunday afternoon, and I could not find enough information. I'm no Arkham expert, but I don't otherwise. I don't understand why I wouldn't engage and force a discard, because it readies and moves as one action, right? As much as that sentence doesn't have any rules weight. Asmari Glacier, uh, that's reasonable. Hydron 6. We can deal with that. Thanks, you too. Like, I'm not understanding the argument otherwise, and I'd agree what everyone is saying here. Okay, do you want to go deeper into the Arkham rules? I spent part of my COVID pandemic to organize a mass community effort to get a lot of outstanding rules answered. Veronica, where are you sitting on Pitchfork ad hoc? 
because there's like seven different questions around pitchfork ad hoc and none of them are answered and it's it's uh it's annoying okay we have slap vendel for early pressure if we have to contest mind you magnet now we have a, a easy way to beat penra sort of but this opening hand is probably like dirty laundry dz dirty laundry slap vendel creative yeah this is fine just hush the deep one the hush cards mind you are uh are pretty bad i'm currently sick it's okay veronica hopefully you're feeling better very soon i wonder if you call event against uh ari or whether you just continue to call program on this board say you call event they called program oh sick okay Okay, so for those who are familiar as Mari, 44 card deck, probably only running six agendas. If you just simply call a program, we can't do as Mari stuff. So we don't really have a good reason to pressure. A sedated kept, which means that with six agendas, there's probably not an agenda in HQ. And if it is, it's a blown, which we don't want to interact with. So this is probably a good time to set up. I'd argue Dirty Laundry Archives to play two events is totally cromulent. Uh, okay, well, that answers it. So we just do Dirty Laundry Archives. We're not going to install a program. I will do DZ Creative. That's a good open. Enjoy the game of heading out. Thank you, Veronica. Thanks for your help with the rules stuff. Uh, it's it's a, it's a mess. Aaron, what's your favorite horror movie? Always call event turn one. How you doing? Let's see what this is. I wonder if this is Jupestad kill. Program. I do think you call event turn one. My favorite horror movie. I'm very fond of uh, Scream, like the original Scream. Uh, I don't know what you call these sort of horror movies, but like I think Seven is quite compelling. As much as it's not strict a horror movie, I have to look at her like Jellyfin server. This is World Tree Ari. Lockmanos, no, it's a uh, Maven, uh, Poison Vala Ari. So we're assuming this is a Rashida. I don't know what defensive upgrade it could possibly be on. If we face check, we can get down a Slap Vandal for free, which is nice. We have Dirty Laundry. I don't want to Dirty Laundry this. I can't get a good read on this. I see the issue now. And instead of then creates ambiguity, yes. Are you just playing with anyone who joins? Yeah, booty, totally. Anyone who joins, you just have to deal with the wrath of me complaining that I don't like your deck sometimes. Apologies for that. It's a boarding troll. Okay, cool. So we want to go through that. So this is a reasonable hush matchup. So we'll boarding troll there. If they trash a boarding troll to beat our slap vandal, so be it. But uh, we're going to deal with that. They got money off of this. I enjoy the comparison for my version. Daujin, that's a good idea. I'll try it. So I didn't want to dirty laundry here in case it was a magnet. So let's see what's in the server. We're assuming Rashida, and then I don't know if we found a jupe stat or something. That would be pretty telling. But they he iced up two centrals. The question is whether you crack this. I don't think you do. I'm scared. Okay, we're uh we're in uncharted territories, my friends. Draw. <laughs> I think we do nuka hit nuka. Okay. Hey, Habby. Not to backseat for the core, but turn one program seems not a choice. Yeah, I agree. I think we agree that turn one program. It would only make sense if you push a remote server with like a Rashida in it. I think that makes sense. I understand why you want to do into Arasana, but like this turn, we don't have a real big reason to install programs. So if we do environmental DZ, we can do credit creative. It's a bit slow. We definitely want to get more card draw flowing. So if we nuka specifically into, again, we don't have sure gamble, which I kind of miss sure gamble. It just makes playing so much smoother. Uh, but I understand that's not a great card draw later in the in the deck, so people don't play it. I, I think Tuno, it was running like one in the last version that got published. But if we do environmental, not that we need the DZ, but it charges this. And then I think we just do creative. Like, they're not doing anything too fast. If it he spends eight to fast advance, I think we're not that upset about it. Like, this means Beals and three twos. So, like, three twos and NBN aren't great besides that one that is. So, let's just play stuff. Is it normal for the corp to only have one remote server? Uh, classically in standard, yes, unless they're playing like an asset spam type deck. But generally, yeah, that's not uncommon because it's hard. Like generally you want to ice stuff up unless you have something that in the remote server is like problematic to trash on its own merit. So this is probably an agenda. If they spend three advancements and res for six, they can score at four two, can't afford it. Vernissage is really good. So we can do Vernissage Simul Chip. That gets us somewhere. We have Propeller for the border control, so then Slap Vandal Bounce is okay. Uh, I'll try once. Okay, that's good. So I don't think we have to do that much. I'll just keep getting our money up. I have a doctor's appointment to address healing complications. Oh, hopefully that's okay. They burned something so I'm ouchy today. Oh, ordered comfort food and watching Final Destination, my fifth series. Seamless. Oh, don't Crypto Crash me. We got Crypto Crashed. That was really bad. Sorry to hear that, Aaron. Hopefully it's doing okay. 
I've seen a couple of the Final Destination ones, so it's good to know that's your favorite series. Okay, at least we can kind of recover here. They named Program again. So we need to be a bit more aggressive here. And so we can install Slap Bendle for free as much as we can't break for free. Uh, so we probably have to do credit, credit, dirty laundry, which is a bit ugly, but then we can just cycle the, um, the slap vendor on this thing that gives him two credits, which is not great, but we have to recalibrate because this is a bit of a faster deck for sure. Uh, I wonder if we can consider contesting that. I think maybe we could have just to force a res. I don't know if he was threatening out. I guess seamless reverse is kind of scary. We need to stay on top. So what can we do here? Run HQ. If it's a VSA, it's annoying. Uh, it's not the most common card in Asmari because it doesn't have real big synergy as much as it is relatively good into like Audrey and stuff like that. Uh, so we can, it's program. This is the first program. Yeah. So we can install two of these in a simul chip. Cause this is urban. This is DZ. This is urban. And then we're kind of off to the races. That might be fine. Yeah. I think installing triple programs is pretty good into this. And it lets us recover. It's good that we had that. So this is kind of a, a nothing turn, let's be honest. Uh, how do we do this? So we want to solve the Slab Vandal this turn. They have seven credits, which they can res some pretty big stuff, but he can't res a Hydra. It costs 10. So if we run HQ here, we can install this from hand for free and it gives us enough to pressure. I think we do run HQ here because we still have an urban art. And as soon as we install this, uh, it gives us nine credits. So, oh, no action. Sorry. So technically we missed priority. So we got information from him, but in theory, we don't have money to do Bologna. So the best we can do here is if we want to deal with uh, Bologna is we can Arasana still to install the Slap Vandal. No, nah, it's all good. So here we want to Arasana. We have a simul chip, so we don't really care where we put it. Uh, I think we'll put it on R&D Ice is fine. We want to do this anyways. We get nine cards, we get a bounce. So now we can steal. Okay, that's a good trash. Unfortunately, now that we put it here, we can't really contest HQ last click. So maybe that was a mistake, uh, but we just have to keep our card drop. Okay, let me catch up on chat. You think Ambiguity is frustrating? Try playing Legends of Runeterra. There are cards that are straight up don't work the way they say they do on the cards. So you have the little text on cards as possible according to the devs. Oh, to have is little. Yeah, I could see that being immediately frustrating. If you haven't played LOR in like a year or more, but I don't remember if being too bad back then did it get worse. Okay, we need to contest that. So we can bounce the Slap Vandal. They're going to call a program. So this is where the program installs seem really quite good. So we can install, we have the propeller. So we just want to run this. We can't deal with this if it's a magnet. Uh, if that's the case, we probably want to draw once. We have three SMCs. That's the only way we beat magnet. But we want to deal with a daily quest into this. We could consider overclocking it. If it's a magnet, it's kind of a waste. So I don't think we exactly have to. Let's draw once. All right, that's not a good draw. On six credits, is there anything they could res with multiple subroutines that would be bum a bummer? Technically like an F2P. I think that's all that's coming to mind. I heard about the move away from PvP set to here. Really love the game. Thought the PvP is really good as well. Oh, into uh, no action. Yes. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Oh, crap. It is a VSA. So either we install and break this, uh, which I don't think we do. So we're just going to take a tag, lose a credit. So that is... Technically, we can now break it because we have a Penrose in the deck, but I'm surprised to see this. It's still a very good card into the meta. But we're going to take a tag. I wonder if they have tag punishment. That's the first we've seen. And then Propeller, we break. Uh, we could install a card, a program to give him two credits. We're not going to. I don't know if you can afford to Border Control there. So we gain two, three. Sans Sans stays. Uh, we definitely have to remove the tag here. And then... Yeah, the program call is actually really good against us. I wonder if we can like dirty laundry archives just to get the slap vandal on the table. Uh, I don't want to give him two credits. Like we want to do the double program turns. I think we just draw once and throw out the UAV. Have to be getting broken for money. Yeah, exactly. So like playing the poison vial is the same as breaking it. So mixed bag. We have to check this every single turn, which is really frustrating because that VSA is really well positioned. So if that's another crypto crash, we're not in the worst spot. Naming program again. 
I think we want to pressure central servers because unless it's the Rashida, he doesn't really have the money to do too much with it. And we haven't seen a seamless yet. So I think we draw once. Simul chip gets us access to literally nothing. Okay, that's good. If we overclock with this, we actually can get our Penrose. Now, I don't know what the text on Penrose is, but I'm pretty sure now we can break this. As much as it is, three credits is a bit expensive. But this is more scary because they're jamming turn after turn. So we can dirty laundry our uh, HQ to get the slap vandal, but then we can't break it. I think we still do it. I think there's an agenda that probably goes on server one, so we have to probably position ourselves on R&D. But there's clearly a lot of ways to get rid of our money. I wonder if there's uh, oppos as well. I meant to Arsana there. I don't think it's going to matter. Uh, no action. We want to find a magnet sooner than later before we commit. Penrose is also factor install. It is, yeah, it is. Mesny, sick. Uh, that's a reason to poison vial. So here we can go for an axis, or we can install a card to save three credits. Do we toss in a hush? No, it doesn't. We've been running into really good hush matchups, which I think is worth keeping in mind. We've got two good hush matchups. So I do think we cut a poison vial for a hush and probably a pinhole. Okay, so on encounter, we can lose three credits. That's not great. He's on one, so we can protect HQ. If we install a program, he'll be on three. So we can lose three and then run HQ. Or we can install a slap bundle for free and then break this for one. This has to be Rashida now. Seems like there's Rashida when they're going down to one credit. Yeah, I think so. Which means we want to pressure HQ next turn. Um, so do we want to get an access? I don't think we can afford to access when we don't have Bologna credit. So I think we do our son this. But I think we just don't lose the credits. And then here we're going to install an SMC, which is good. Uh, mind you, Prognostic is not great into Asmari. Yeah, Rashida makes sense. We have Penrose. Yeah, we have Penrose. I don't think Penrose is going to need a stealth credit to break VSA. Uh, and technically here we can have Penrose overclock, and then we can run the remote server for like two to three credits. He, he has to have two pointers there. That's a spin doctor. Oh, maybe a daily quest there? Okay. What do you think that is? A uh, Malia? Or what's her name? Uh, uh, Amani, excuse me. So we only have four credits. I think there's a chance this is an Amani. I don't know what else would it be. We could run archives. It could be a spin doctor, but you wouldn't really ice up the spin doctor. So if we want to pull a Penrose with the overclock. Ooh, we're so far away from Maven here, right? Like we're not drawing our programs. Last turn, we last game we set up our Maven relatively quickly. But I'm worried that it's an Amani, right? Like they clearly care about us not having money and then having that be like a line that they can attack us on. Obviously, just not having money is good. Uh, that's why we want three mantles. So we could overclock archives, get the access. Maybe it is the one pointer that's really annoying. Uh, we can get a Penrose down. Then Penrose breaks one, two, one, two. I guess we could just draw once. Okay, that doesn't really help. If we overclock, we actually only save. What does Penrose cost to install? Is it two or three? Because overclocking only saves us three credits, then it's three. Because DZ, DZ, Urban Art, yeah. So it only saves us two credits. So the overclock's not worth it on archives. If anything, we would overclock this. He, in theory, could. Why not overclock everyone? Yeah, and he could, in theory, pop it immediately. We still have priority on the overclock. I think that's probably still correct. So with priority, SMC, crack, one, two, Penrose, one. So break for one. So this is a Kogi Anifractor. Uh, it breaks one for one. Boosting is only for strength. So far, we haven't seen anything over strength. Actually, well, must have well, apparently. I think giving him two credits here is not good because he has a Saiyan Sand. We can still trash Rashida. Oh, and we have overclock money. Penrose, yeah, when it gone. We have a bit of stealth in here. But mostly we just wanted a way to deal with VSA and Magnet and Horde and stuff like that. It's a Bologna. Yeah, that makes sense. So this is probably Damani Sinai. Uh, that's going to be an issue for us. So that might be in there for a bit. We need to just get our money up, which is not the easiest. We've installed a program, which is good. Uh, we are falling behind pretty considerably 
draw. Uh, we can install that. It's free. Should we? I don't know. Maybe not. Especially because we don't have urban art charges anymore. Especially if they score an agenda and bounce some money. I don't know what server two is. Oh, it's Rashida. <laughs> we're going to build another server for Rashida because you have so many cards to hand after a single Rashida. Like, we're in a bad spot. We didn't steal a trash, though, so we're not going to get oppoed. But yeah, this is uh, this is not good. Now, they have to commit to the Bologna unless they want to, like, overinstall it. So that's kind of okay for us. So, like, advance at a minimum so they can do triple advance res for six. So now they're throwing to score out a Bologna, which means if that's an Amani, it's a problem. Uh, so can we contest this remote server? And still have five credits. Are we going to be oppo to that point? Probably, yeah. We can always simul chip Penrose Flicker if we want to break the boarding troll, but we don't need to do that. It's the same cost. Ah, just having more upfront economy would be reasonable. So we can run this. Install a slap vandal for free. Draw a card. We'll be on two credits. What's the econ remaining? Not a lot. Single dirty laundry, two environmental testings. That's it. And then like all the mantles and two overclocks. It's kind of like the issue with this deck too. It's like, cause we're not playing Cuban. We don't actually make that much money running, money running. Ideally we're meant to like make it with mantles off central server pressure, but this is like really good. They're jamming behind two mid range ice and we struggle against like little ice, little small ices. Uh, so let's see how it goes. So we're so far away from Maven. Not that we need it. We have poison vial, which theory helps against boarding troll sort of. But we know they're going to score out of Bologna. I'm more worried about this being an Amani Sanai, not that we can trash it. So I don't think we have a play here besides draw. Okay. She seems bad right now. We cannot spend three clicks to get R&D pressure. This is the Beatrice issue. I think there's way many worse sports states than good sports states for how slow she is. It's nice that they're together, but like, do it on your own time, am I right? Woof. Uh, draw. Flux. Mm, charge propeller. That's it. We can install this to draw a card, but it gives him two credits. So ideally we install Slap and Flux in the same turn. There might be agendas in archives. This could be a spin doctor. I wouldn't be too surprised about it. And we lose in two turns because they score a Bologna and then they go from there. I'm hoping Beatrice makes more sense. I'm pretty sure there's going to be like connection support in the next upcoming bit. Uh, but I don't know. It's a neat effect. Yeah, it's a neat effect and it's expensive because like rightfully it is. But like now the issue is if you want to put HQ pressure in a shaper deck, we saw a burner. It's not hard to do it. It doesn't look like in the upcoming side. So I don't know. Uh, This is really bad. We just are struggling to get economy. Our deck is a bit too big. Okay, that's next turn. I think we run archives. Give him two credits to give us a card draw and two credits. This is iffy, but like we're so far behind. Okay. Yeah, Spin Doctor makes sense. So now at least it's awkward if he scores out the Bologna. He should probably slow the low, slow roll the Bologna because he has too many cards in hand. So the shovel two unseen. So let's see what we've seen. We've seen a toll booth and a Mesni. Okay. So let's get rid of Beatriz. Some part of me wants to keep it because it seems nice. But Mess and Chess, what we can beat. And then Nuko, Nor Diesel. I think the second Poison Vial is probably it. Okay, two credits. Not an Amani. So now sedated, if he's going to score at the Bologna, unless he reses the, the very expensive, which he might actually want to do anyways, because we're not able to contest it really easily. And he's probably set up here. So like this turn, we have to run HQ because it's very likely that he'll slow roll this and keep a 3-2 in hand so that he can score out next turn. Yeah, there you go. So now we have to pressure the heck out of HQ because if he has a 3-2 in there, it's either we sweep that or we sweep server one. So uh, not going to go well for us. We haven't seen tomorrow's headline and I'm assuming that there's uh, just like Beals in there. We might have needed to simul chip to get a card draw here, but I think we just like diesel. What can we get done that gets us more pressure? It'd be like the one of twinning. A mantle would be fine here. Yeah, mantle's fine. So we install mantle. We run HQ, we run HQ. If we overclock, is there any pressure card we can get here? We can get Nasha. 
Nyasha on our last run. That's something to see two on our ID. Oh no, we cut Nyasha. That's the last card we cut. I couldn't remember what we cut. Why are we so slow? Late Lily Pad, not early card draw. Uh, we spent a lot of time charging the remote server and it slowed us down. We drew early economy, but not early card draw. But we just don't have the money. Like we got Crypto Crash and lost six credits. I think that's the biggest deal is that we didn't play around in Crypto Crash. We lost a lot of money to it. We had a good money start, but then we losing six to crypto is like a problem. So now we have to get some hot rips. Like we just run this twice, discard nonsense. No further, okay. Three, two, border control, okay. So we just have to go back. Uh, if they if he doesn't res, will Arasana? Public trail? Oh shit, that's bad. Public trail is a really mean card. We don't need the DZ. Uh, the game's too slow for Nuka. I wonder what we're doing with public trail here. But yeah, they there was really an interest in like credit differentials, but it's probably just three two off the top. In theory, we are threatening clot. Okay, so that's a balloon in the remote server if I've ever seen one. So what could we do? We could get down Nyasha. We could see two on R and D. We need to win this turn. We're assuming that six points, eight points are out, and there's no 3-2 in hand. So that's probably the only card in hand is a Bologna, and that's in the remote server now. So if there's a Seamless in hand, trashing the Sand Sand doesn't do anything. But if we can get in there and trash the Sand Sand, we can just trash the... Uh, oh, no, Nyasha. Sorry, Jam. Yeah, you're right. I totally keep forgetting about that. Uh, we can't deal with this. Uh, if we can deal with the Bologna, we can deal with the Sand Sand, because we don't have uh, Pinhole. So how do we deal with R&D? We can't. Well, we can. We just want to duck it. Uh, we also can poison violet, which is fine. So we have to get like really, really lucky off of R and D. Again, to deal with this, we think it's border control, border control VSA, which makes the most sense. So we'd have to run this many times. We didn't get tag punished, so like this obviously is the winning agenda. Um, so the question is whether we simul chip something. Technically, this should be on his turn, which we've apparently missed the window on that. I don't think there's anything. Beatrice for two is really funny, but I think it's way too slow. Take clicks. Okay, so we bounce the Slap Vandal. I think we don't bounce the Slap Vandal. I think it has to be there. Okay, so we can install the Poison Vial going down to one credit. If we see a Bologna in R&D, we'd have to overclock it, but there's one Bologna. So we have to basically get three runs, every single one to be an agenda. That seems incredibly difficult. There's a chance there's a third Bologna in HQ. It'd be pretty unlikely. But how do we possibly get out of here? How's the lack of Hush feeling right now? Fine. We have bigger problems than not having Hush. Like if we had a Hush, we'd blank this border control, but then we can't blank this border control. We've dealt with VSA. The Hush is, Hush is good into these two matchups, but it's like not the biggest issue we have. You can bring Mesty with Penrose. Uh, that's true. One stealth, two to break. It's cheaper not to, though. Right, so what is the numbers? One to break, which will be mantle. We'd rather just break this for one and have no money to lose, I think. Uh, Yeah, I think we just install... Like, we can install Poison Vial to duck. That's something. Install Poison Vial to duck, run R&D, run R&D. Like, it's, it's a... It's impossible for us to win, but not impossible. It's super improbable. If that's the case, though, we might as well bounce the Slap Vandal. Yeah, because at least draws a card. I just don't know what card we could draw that would make this a bit better for us. Maybe a Dirty Laundry. So if we install the Poison Vial, we go down to zero. Then we can run R&D. Yeah, this is just like really, really, really hard chance to win the game, but we're going to go for it. Yeah, okay. Arasana, Slap Vandal. Why not the run remote server? Because it's border control into border control into Bologna. We have no way of dealing with any part of that. Draw a card, okay. Continue encountering. By the way, how's it going to Holes Pub? So we'll break the end the run. 
Uh, thanks. One poison vial this. So this gives us money that we can trash like Rashida's and go back. But we basically need every single run to hit an agenda. Okay, well, <laughs> the dream's over. <laughs> All right, the dream's over. So what can we do here? If we ran this, we have to run it three times and then have on the last. We could consider running this on floating tags though. So we'd have to run once border control. We would do border control, take the tag. Or lose a credit is actually just as good as not breaking it. Because yeah, we have to break this one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one. And then still have five. Yeah, I don't think we can do it. So now our best option here is run archives, run HQ. Run archives is actually not great. I think run HQ twice is slightly higher chance. Uh two F2Ps. Best of luck. Thank you, Lockmanos. But run HQ. Spin Doctor. Uh, I'm not going to trash that. If it's not the agenda, we want our money anyways. Summon Deep Dive? Yeah. Seamless. Oh, they're stunting on us. You didn't have to do that. Thanks for the game. Yeah, we got blown out really bad. It was only a 12 turn uh, game turn. The Corp gained 52 credits. We gained 37. Again, I think we gain, end up giving them like 8 to 10 credits, which like, that's the Asmari thing. Um, but how far are we away from popping off? In this matchup specifically, they threw out some of their big ice, but they we had no reason to like translate to Maven. So we just wanted another environmental testing to set up. So I think we should thin our deck because I think what we're doing is okay. We're just not like setting up fast enough. Mind you, by turn 12 and the, turn 11 last game, we were fully set up, but our opponent wasn't jamming their mode server. And the most offensive thing that it did was like SDS or breakers, which we can deal with. Losing six was a problem. No Q loops, no Maven late mantle. I don't think we need the Maven. The mantle would have been good. The Q loops would have been really good. I, I think like the biggest part of uncertainty with this deck specifically is also just like finding the, uh, the what's it called? The twinning. Because otherwise we put on very, very, very little pressure. Okay, I'll do Diogen's version. I just want to make the changes first that I think we need to make with this deck, which is like cut out the bad cards. So arguably, I think the Prelude has been surprisingly good. I think Beatrice is no good. I kind of want to push her gambles in there. But I don't know what slot to do it. I think we drew more DZs than we need. And I think maybe the DZs are playing around a matchup in which we need to install like seven mu which is only that one matchup which is cursed and it's probably more often been by hush so i think this is what we should do next and then again hope that we plan to hb or whatever <laughs> and it will actually be legitimately annoying okay so this is the version that diogen posted uh it's not on smc it's on maven i don't know if it has enough card draw it has some cards that uh it has the hush which is good the leech i don't count on conduit to me i think makes not a lot of sense for this package because it's actually really expensive to run repeatedly so i think this is what i would change let alone not play two but we're gonna try it because we said we would we tried bird and bully i played it was good how's it going i don't have to say your name we will play it for the decklist of the week on for sure on this weekend we played against it or sorry on thursday on the decklist of the week we usually play on thursday nights i played against it i think it's really cool and does some really like exciting and fun stuff um I get bummed out because the deck like isn't a really bad spot into Hermes because unfortunately like the big influence thing it does is just like nonsense into Hermes, which it is what it is. But uh, I think the ice suites really mean too. start a game with opponent. You got custom biotics or professor's your opponent. Start a game without an opponent. Yes. Joseph, how's it going? Yo, you might not be watching live. Maybe if you just saw that, which is a hard thing to fix because you won't hear this until it's much later. Okay, so this version is largely the same. We actually don't have that many programs, so I think we're going to be leaning on Leech a fair bit. Oh, no, we have about the same amount of programs. The problem is, like, a lot of the programs are doubles. So, like, the two Mavens is a false positive. The two Conduits is a false positive. Uh, the idea of this deck is that it's going to be using Reclaim to, like, refill the Poison Vials instead of, like, the Flux Capacitor. I was so stoked to play Flux that I'd rather do it. Reclaim is, like, kind of a neat card. It allows you to tutor hardware or, like, recycle hardware or virtuals, which is a really, really niche effect in this game. Uh, it's kind of low on tempo, but it does do the install for free, which is okay. Or not for free, for, like, clicklessly with the click. So, pseudo-clicklessly. And simul chips have been actually okay. I Maybe there's a chance we don't need three of them, but they've been pretty good. I think you want gambles over dirty laundries. As much as I usually prefer dirty laundry and Aries, you have so much setup to do here. Yeah, I think we could argue in our version, and maybe this version too, that the gambles are okay. This one also has Baya, which like maybe with Baya, that takes the click compression slot, and then we could play gambles. I think that one might make sense. 
I could see it. I just really like Dirty Laundry in, in RE for obvious reasons. You want to be running every turn. In the Esmari matchup, it's not always true. So that's also another one that you'd prefer the sure gambles. Because like we didn't want to program a couple turns, which is unfortunate. Uh, let's try this. What's going to be really hard is that like we're playing a list that's similar to a list we played before, but different, fundamentally different enough that it's going to be hard to switch gears because I can see a bunch of the same cards and be like, OK, we'll just draw into X and it's not going to be in the deck. So be patient with me and maybe remind me if I'm drawing for things that aren't in the deck. I'll try and explain what I'm drawing for. Nana's gone, but as you might have noticed, there's now a cat tree in the background. Nanako, the local cat. She just had her seventh birthday yesterday, and so she has a nice tower full of tissue paper at the bottom for more celebration. I was hoping at some point she'll hang out there, and she was actually right next to it for the beginning of the stream, so we'll see. Okay, this is the deck. Mind you, this is the exact deck that was just shouted out. Uh, so this is the deck list of the week. So it actually has a lot of six strength ice. This is a nightmare matchup for this deck. Congrats on the deck list of the week. So just to show everyone what the deck list that we're working with, which maybe it's the worst time to play a deck like this that's playing Maven, is that this deck is just full of six strength ice. Now, mind you, Slap Vandal, Poison Vial deals with it relatively well, but there's a Brawn in here, three Valanchows, Archer, Surveyors eventually get up to strength. Again, we can hush that, so it's not that bad. Trebuchet and Winchester. Uh, trebuchet, mind you, six strength. So that means the Maven's going to be really, 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 really bad until we get to mid to late game. Uh, the deck is on a single Mavirus, so we can get a bit further on Leech, but like this is not the easiest matchup uh, for sure. This hand, it's not bad. Uh, I don't love early buy on turn one. With creative, it's okay. We could like buy a draw to install lily pad, probably cheap. That's only good if we get a program then this turn. And then we would recover with creative. Don't love their conduit. Again, two conduit. I'm not excited to get this down until like pretty late in the game, which is why I don't like two of them, let alone as soon as they get like a brawn and RD, like I don't I know how we conduit it. The updated version might have one wraparound and one hordum. Yeah, that's that's good. Uh, wraparound is a problem for this deck. Uh, this deck has no way of beating wraparound, uh, the Diogen version. I went out of the way to play Propeller, which again, we haven't seen wraparound, so it's not worth it. But this deck has no way of dealing with Hordum uh, Triple Advanced, which is not that common. Besides Hush, it can. And I guess you could Hush a wraparound, but I don't think you want to do that. So, okay, that's not true. It has ways to deal with it. They're just kind of difficult. I'll keep this. Yeah, the Vandals are huge. And like Arasana classically has a reasonable matchup into the outfit. So we'll see how bad it gets because this outfit is can be quite fast. It's not the sort of like hold agendas in hand outfit and hope. Uh, London cap, that's not great, but it is what it is. So like maybe we should mulligan here exactly for a slap Vandal. Okay, five credits. What can be rezzed? I actually don't think there's much we're worried about. Oh, sorry, I have too many tabs open and they're not the right order. So on five credits here, it's like border control, whatever. It's only border control. So I think we can contest this click one and then it has to be Rashida for it to be really, really bad A no too big to fail. So I think we can't just contest this. Otherwise we could like buy a bands HQ. Uh, we probably go R and D London might have an agenda. If that's a Rashida, there might be an agenda in hand. We could buy a bands HQ, hope that we get the three and 40 slap bundle and then we can charge this technically even a Maven deals with it. But we don't have the money. Valen Chow. Oh, Valen Chow's five. Yeah, you're right. Valanchow makes a lot of sense. We want to slap into Valanchow. So we won't face check into Valanchow. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think we'll go HQ to get some information. Generally, turn one, you want to run HQ, especially if they mulligan. On a keep, it's a bit different. Okay, Maven, Poison Vial. So Poison Vial slap is really, really good into the deck. Install a card for one cheaper. So we don't really need to get the Urban down. Uh, I guess the Poison Vial? That's a steal. So we don't have much to do here besides, I think we could consider throwing out the conduit, but credit creative. We probably want to put it on HQ. We need a bit of draw here. So I think we just do, oh, we have three clicks, draw. Okay. Uh, Not unique, it's kind of cool. I think we do credit creative. We don't really have a reason to put these down, but once we get a slab bundle, we can contest. So this actually looks like an agenda. It might be a setup to protect a, a Rella. Spin Doctor Server 2. So like kind of we could get go down conduit path and like mind you conduit is reasonable into a deck that's running like a lot of agendas like 12 agendas is a lot. The density on R&D or on centrals is relatively high. Uh, mind you standoff and stuff like that. So sometimes you can just dig and it's only on one virus. I think there's a chance we might just wolf two here. We can draw once 
Because if we get a slap vandal, this server is absolutely junk. I think we figured it out. So I think we run server one. We have don't have overclock in the list, so we're actually not good at dealing with assets or upgrades. Um, I think a Parisha makes sense in the deck. It's a slots issue. But now we can run this. We can slap Vandal Poison Vial. We'll have bad publicity. Not on this run to trash things, but we definitely want to contest this. I'll say no action, because in theory we can hush. Uh, okay. But this is the interaction with Poison Vial. It's really good into this deck. Maybe this is not a bad matchup at all. So Poison Vial for one. Doesn't matter which one, because we're going to break the other two for free. So breaking the Valance Shower for one, literally for free, next turns, we're in a good spot. Wax is the new card first, Tukana. Still going to fire this turn. Malapert, no, and this is Norella. Yeah, okay. Good. We're going to find the commands. You use like undo click. If you, uh, they're in the help tab, but if you do slash, it writes all of them there behind my face. So it shows you all of them. But if you want to go into the help tab, it has all the commands uh, written somewhere there. Good question. Okay, so now they have an agenda in hand. It has to be a hostile. Uh, obviously, we have too many cards in hand, so I'm going to just install the Urban Art Vernissage, and then we can bounce this, reinstall it, and start doing environmental testing. So I don't think we need two of those. Yeah, it, it's really good. There's, you use like 5% of the commands 90% of the time. So just undo click and undo turn are the important ones. In theory here, without a simul chip, like that's why I like three simul chips, is like London should overinstall this if, uh, if they can. Because then, yeah, I think you could consider trashing this. Too bad publicity goes far. So now we have to just make sure nothing gets in the remote server. Undo click, yeah. Kind of makes sense. That is a better play. Because we can't contest this. And then that is relative to Malapert. It's a pretty bad steamroll. And six credits. Uh, can't res trebuchet. We can res Valanchow, boarding control, stuff like that. So if we have a simul chip, we also can like run through two of them, which is nice. Uh, so what do we do here? We can get the environmental testing. We can run R&D. We can install the slap vandal. I think we need it just going forward. If you trash the ISO slap vandal, the slap get discarded. Yeah, it just goes to your heap. Um, so we're worried about the score out here. Because everything pushes London forward. And at least the best case scenario, at least we have the conduit in hand that we could just like go hog wild. But I think we need to maybe probably go to environmental testing. I think conduit's slightly too early. Like I think we need to make London uncomfortable about this. So we can install this for one credit, run HQ, slap vandal for free. Is it more important we get our economy up or our card engine up? I'd argue that we want to get environmental testing before Lilypad. That'll be a next turn problem. So I'm going to run R&D. Assuming they don't have an agenda in hand, we do know that there is a too big to fail. So we'll Arasana, Slap Vandal here. Uh, breach, bad publicity. We can trash things and go back. There's a lot of trashables in the deck. Shuffling just two in. Okay. Again, the density in R&D is really rough. Uh, so here we do need to draw once. We can go back. But it's an unknown. And like top deck and hostile would have been very, very bad if that's not an agenda. So I'm glad we did that. Is it two upgrades on server one or multiple agendas? We don't know. You can't have multiple. Okay, we do know. You can't have multiple agendas or multiple assets in the same server. So all we know is that these could be as many upgrades as you want, but they're going to be one agenda, one asset. We access these. So we know it's a Malapert, which is an upgrade, an Arella, which is an upgrade. We don't know what the glowing card is that was installed last turn. Okay, Trebuchet. Cubon, really good in the matchup too. You can still force a res. I think it could be kind of bad. Actually, not that bad. You're right. We could force a res. But with a too big to fail in hand, unfortunately, no, it's probably not a great res. Yeah. Okay, so that's probably a trebuchet. So we have to just move our slap vandal there. And we're in a pretty good spot. So nothing went into the remote server. It still could be an agenda. So this turn, we could install a Cubon on there. I'd argue that we don't actually need money. It just accelerates the urban art. The other option now is we can, this deck doesn't have DZ, right? How much MU do we have? It only has six MU. So like you can't even Maven that hard. Like the biggest you'll have is a five strength Maven. So the Maven is kind of useless in this matchup besides a way of dealing with like border controls and maybe a Hordem. So we can run HQ. We don't know any of the cards in hand. We want to install some stuff. So we could do credit, install Lily Pad going down to zero run HQ, install the Slap Vandal. Uh, I think we want to see the top of R&D. I think we will do that. The other option is not. It's click for credit. We install Cubon on there, and then we run. Oh, yeah, you're right. There is a leech. There is a leech. Yes, and there's only one Mavirus. No, that's true. That's true. So we think that's a trebuchet. We have to watch out. There could be red caps in hand. So now with three credits, right? Like, oh, it's a border control. That's actually a bit rough for us.
because if we lose a slap bandle to that that's kind of bad so we actually will maven a border control i don't think we'll commit another trojan to it so i think we're going to let this fire because if we put the slap bandle on that we lose our pressure here so i think we let the border control fire because if we put two on there this border control is not attacks so that you just pop it whenever you want so now we're running rnd or sorry hq we'll use our asana's ability and install slap bandle on the unrez dice no probably the balance is fine uh, we won't use the urban credits because we have bad publicity get a red cap trebuchet okay that makes sense we did know that was in hand uh and then uh, next turn we want to get the maven down so that should be easy we'll just draw yeah and then we can run hq for free so ideally we bounce the cube on unless uh they put more ice there okay second ice so now at 11 we're pretty sure that's a trebuchet so thinking so poison vial poison vial means we can get through two of the ice we can always just go through valanchow the one separate team that matters so if we force a trebuchet res, we just need more slap vandals. We don't have more slap vandals. So I think we let this happen. The problem is whether there's a Tukana in there. And if there's a Tukana in there, things snowball. If there's no Tukana in there, the deck actually can struggle because the deck doesn't have a lot of ice. I'm pretty sure, sorry, one window. The deck only has, oh, that's actually not that bad. 15 ice. That's a bit low, but not that bad. Considering how trashable though R&D is, you need R&D to be strong. So if that's the case, I think we don't bounce. I think we do bounce the slap metal. So here, we probably just install the Maven for free. Gain nine. Install the Conduit Go. If we want to face check into this, again, the Maven will be most three strength. So if it's a trebuchet, which we know it is, we can install the slap metal on that. That forces London out three credits. Uh, we get another bad publicity. But then we can't really deal with that. So I think we just like tunnel RD. I think we do do the conduit because if you do the Malapur, it shuffles and that's pretty bad. Um, the other option is Lily Pad first to get some more card draw. I think with a diesel in the hand, we don't really need to do that. Okay. So now we're on nine credits. Is there anything we want to diesel into here? Do, uh, probably the border control is going to eat it. So I don't think we do. So I think we just conduit run. Uh, we don't have to hit the conduit, but we will, because habits. Border control. Uh, Maven for two. I think we'll let London have a credit. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so that's gone. So now we can conduit back. Uh, we're going to Arasana. Slap Vandal. On the Valen Chow. This might be overinstalled, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to ice up RD here. Rashida Trash One. I think we'd rather not have London draw that, because that goes on remote server and that's bad. And London's probably gonna score out. I think that's okay. Ideally, we wanted to see an ice there or something, but unfortunately, London's drawing an unknown. And we still have three red caps, uh, two bad publicity only. Next turn's probably Diesel. We wanna get our Lily Pit down, because every turn now it's a clickless draw off of a run event and we too bad publicity goes pretty far uh it's just the maven's not gonna be breaking a lot until we get a leech and then we have to play around one mavirus which there's one unknown upgrade in server one assumingly maybe there's two so this is a big fork if you access server one can you only access one card you have to access all of them uh your choice of order unless there is a card added mid run or was that an sds no tukana malapert Arella. So th this is happening. So the good thing about trashing the Rashida is the Rashida goes in here, but now with Malapert, you can grab a Rashida, grab a Movirus, and put it in the server. So these order of triggers, we'll see where the Tukana goes. 24 credits is a lot. Oh, it's a hostile. What was the first click? Too big to fail. So that's a lot of money. But we still deal with stuff relatively well. So there's an ice going to be somewhere. We can eventually deal with this. We're going to run out of poison vial counters, though. But we're gonna need three more programs. So one ice is gonna hit the table, something's gonna go in the remote server. It can't be an agenda unless London has an agenda in hand, because Malapert says you can't search for an agenda. Lengar all does a core player get to randomize the server cards? No. You the order you put them in has to be known. You're not allowed to shuffle them. It could be. Yeah, maybe. Undo turn. Yeah, totally. It 
they didn't get any, uh, any new information here, but basically they don't want to spend a click to play the too big to fail because I think, yeah, that makes sense. You don't really need that much money. They draw instead. So now they have a chance of hitting an agenda and putting in this remote server. So now this game is going to come down to like who wins off of what dig first. So it's where's the Mavirus. On Jaina, you can swap them about. Liam, no, you can't. Oh, you can't swap them. Yeah, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. So it's a trebuchet. So we still go through that. Unfortunately, it is going to run out of poison vault counters. This is where like flux is kind of good. So it's Rashida revealed. So that's probably Rashida, but not necessarily Rashida. So Rashida shuffles the deck, which is fine. So now we have to really like just race. So does it make more sense to pay two credits for a lily pad than to diesel? Yeah, likely. And we'll come to it. Slap, trebuchet, draw. Another slap is really good. Continue. Break for one. Poison Vile the other. Breach C2. Above the log, good steal. Audacity, scary top deck. Conduit, Arasana. Okay. So now we can go back. We're pretty sure that's Rashida. We have to make sure that we're not considering not contesting that. We see two new cards when we go back. I think we go back. No, I'm in. Yeah. Uh, We could just run it twice. I think we want to see all the cards of the Rashida so that we don't have to be worried about it. And we know what London is jamming. So I think we're going to do it. Yeah, we have another poison vial in hand, so it's not the worst. Uh, but I think trashing the side vandal, at least we have another in hand. So we'll go back. We probably want to diesel at some point. But I do really value uh oops, breaking uh locking the top of the deck so Rashida doesn't get anything. I'm mostly a lurker. No, not at all. Lurking's cool. Did they change the rules regarding accessing everything in a server? The only thing they changed recently is that if a card is introduced mid breach step, like recycling a ganked, you don't have to access it. It's your choice. This is also a niche ruling that is uh, doesn't really come up. But if there's an additional cost to access a card, you can refuse. So that only mattered in like Eternal right now with uh, what's it called? The space one. Spin Doctor. Uh, yeah, it's free. Seamless. So if we go back, we see two new cards again. And then we lock again. We're out of poison. Oh, we're already out of poison. It trashes itself, right? Oh, uh, whoops. Hey, Kroar, how's it going? I forgot we're out of poison to counters. I think here was just diesel. Okay, we have a leech. So leech maven. We actually do deal with this for nearly free. It is a Rashida. You can advance it. Arella doesn't care about the card being advanceable. So they drew Seamless Audacity. Uh, that's kind of frightening. Now, with this hand, you probably don't Audacity your whole hand. And with three above the laws out, or hostiles out, the question is, like, how does they, how do they score out? So SDS is relatively frightening. We only have two simul chips. But there's still Atlases and Red Caps. And the Red Caps are still not two twos yet. Um, that is a problem. <laughs> this is tricky. We do want to contest this because we don't know what it is. It's more likely to be an agenda than anything else. And here having like functional breakers we can use bad publicity with, I think would be a bit better. Uh, the Maven is still pretty far away. Now, six strength is all we need. The question is, can we get six strength and enough money soon enough? Probably. There are two twos with four. Oh, now they're at four. Yeah, you're right. Now there are two twos. I forgot they were on four. Thank you, Thanos. So what can we do? We can buy a Bands HQ. We can get a leech down. We know two of the cards in hand, Audacity and, and uh, Seamless. So that could be a 5-3. If we get the leech down, it will fire. No, it won't fire because it misses the successful run trigger. So we're better off just installing it from hand. If we install this from hand, we can get Maven up to four. Then we can run five. I don't think we can get Maven to six. <sighs> How do we do this? So obviously running R&D is pretty sick. We have Slap Vandal, Slap Vandal. So the other option is just say Tunnel R&D, I don't care. I think this is, has a chance of being an SDS, which means losing the Conduit is pretty bad. We also could just win, right? Because we're seeing four cards in R&D. So if we do Slap Vandal, Poison Vial, Run, um, it gives us enough money. But we basically get one run in R&D before the Poison Vial ends. Like, Close itself. This is again why I don't like conduit because it's actually expensive to run R&D multiple times in this deck because you have limited resources. You need to be making targeted runs, not like brute force runs. Again, Beatrice would be pretty good. <laughs> if I had a dollar every time, Beatrice would be good. 
So how do we contest the remote server? This thing we can slap vandal. This thing we can slap vandal. If we had a simul chip, we could like slap vandal shuffle, which would be relatively good. Uh, yeah, we can do it. So that's another way to deal with that. And that would be actually relatively good. We know this is an agenda because they did advance it properly. So the other ways that we can get the Maven up to six strength. So we could install leech run. So we have two clicks left. Maven would be at three strength, four strength. We could run HQ again. It'd be at five strength, assuming we don't hit uh, the purge card. And then when we run the remote server, we can install a single slap vandal. And then the single slap vandal means we would be at one six strength break. So that's kind of tricky. It's weak to border control. We're like, we're slightly behind. Because again, Maven with the leech down would be three strength. Fire's counter is four strength. Run back, Fire's counter is five strength. Then Slap Vandal on stall and Arsana on the run would be six strength. One Slap Vandal, one Maven. Install Leech by Advance HQ to install another program. That can do it, but I think we'll run out of money. Right? Like we have to Leech by Advance, hope that we get a program installed, which we can install Slap Vandal. Yeah, actually, that might work. Yeah, that's probably the best line. This draws a card, so we have another good chance of finding something. Okay. Yeah, I think that's good. So we'll do, it doesn't matter, uh, draw two. Poison file is actually kind of necessary here, isn't it? Like not on Val and Chow, but there's a bigger chance that we actually need poison vial more than we need everything else. Cause like at the end of the day, Maven doesn't do anything well without poison vial. Shit, I think this might be a bit too slow. Cause the Maven will be on four strength. We can make it five strength with slap vandal. So we still need to like trick down a poison vial here. I think we need the poison vial. Because, like, say we don't have the poison vial. Like, Val and Chow we can beat. We can't beat Archer. Right? Archer costs six credits. Free knob here? Yeah, it'd be okay. Um. Hmm. It's just, like, we can't contest this without poison vial. Period. Like, we can test Val and Chow. But the worst case would be Archer. A Brawn is beaten by Valen Chow. I think we have to hope it's Poison Vial. Seamless, we need that. So we have two clicks left. We have one credit, but mind you, we have four credits during a run. So we can install a Slap Vandal. That's actually better than running for the Leech Counter. So we install Slap Vandal on the Valen Chow. We go down to zero credits and we run. Then this is at five, six. So we have one Maven, Valenshaw, Val Slap Vandal, Slap Vandal. We can do it. Yeah, actually, we can do it. Yeah, I, I think this is perfect. Uh, no action. Uh, border Control beats us. The Unexpected Bio Vault? Yeah, we know the list, unfortunately. It's the Deckless of the Week. So the, any bad publicity we get during this run... You have bad publicity for the install, right? Yeah, but we're going to use the bad publicity for this install. Because we need to get this to 5. You didn't need to use the art? Oh, 100%. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. We could have used the... We could have saved a credit on this. Uh, that actually might be impactful. Yeah, yeah, you're 100% right. Hey, I... uh, Hey, I goofed using the UAV credit. Instead of BP. Do you mind? Yeah, that's a huge thing. London got the deck of the week. Ben. Yes. Yeah, it's fun. Also... Thank you for supporting the channel, Ben. I really appreciate it. Counter. Credit. Yeah, so when I when I used the Baya, or sorry. Could have. Yeah, exactly. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, so this one. We probably just pay two. So uh we have to now commit a slap vandal to here. The question is, is it better to slap vandal this or slap vandal the next one? The next one could be seven strength. We can't beat that. I think we just Arisana slap vandal this. We will use the urban because we want as much money as we can during the run. And so we'll break this for one and then poison vial the rest. Okay. So assuming this is like a brawn or something, we're in an okay spot. If it's a wrap round, we're cooked. But like install poison file, use it in the same turn is not great. It's a boarding troll. That's the worst case scenario. Okay, so at least the crack. 
Yeah, right? Pushing the envelope would work here. Well, sort of. Not pushing the envelope. I think we want injection attack. Because I think we have too many cards installed. So this thing now, uh, we can break. So we have enough, and we this contests the border control. So maybe we should have played around border control and not respected two six costers. Yeah, I can. So border control, we break for two. And I think we give London three credits. Uh, no, I'll break it. Sorry. Ah. And then we break this for free. And we don't care about the subroutine, so we save a uh, poison vial counter. At least we didn't slap vandal the boarding control, which would not be good. So now the boarding control gets cracked, so we're just one turn sh short. I think maybe we should respect a boarding control and gone in there with only two slap vandals. And if it's an archer on the outermost, like we just don't slap vandal the Valen Chow, maybe until mid run. Oh no, seamless, seamless. It's an SDS. We're going to lose our conduit. That's the worst case. It's one of in the deck, unless it's a huge atlas, which would be kind of sick. Yeah, I think this is the big difference between Flux and Poison Vial. This matchup, mind you, I think the Poison Vials are very much taxed out. Oh, Atlas with counters. Okay, that's way cooler. So there's no window to use the counters before our Rella triggers. So uh, that just means we lose in two turns. Cool. <laughs> we need to hush this. Uh, we only have no SMCs. So like drawing the hush in this deck is, that's what I don't like, right? Like playing one of hush, super cool. That's been relevant in every single matchup we played today. But, oh, awesome, a virus back is sick. But playing hush without ability to get it. Wait, Arella can go everywhere? I thought Arella was only the server. Oh, that's sick. That's way better. But yeah, playing hush when you have no ability to get it consistently, not sure if I'm excited about it. Because we now have... It's possible to break this. We know we're only going to see one on R&D, and now I think we slowly lose to Double Atlas. We know there's an Audacity in hand. There's a Mavirus in... hand? Relic can ignore install cost too. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, this could have been cheaper. Yeah, the problem I don't like about Arella is just like... Hermes. Like, spending... That much influence just to have a blind card into Hermes. That's the reason I don't like Arella, which is just a bummer. When you play against a Hermes deck, it's just like, cool. Still does something, kind of. Okay, so that's some virus. That's a nice, uh, totally. And I think here we're kind of cornered. So we don't really want to run this. We can. It would make some sense to run this. It is unfortunately expensive for us. You can't even push R&D from a viruses on R&D. Yeah, exactly. Like, again, I don't love Conduit, but like, the problem now is we have we see singles on R and D, so it's in our best interest to like stop fast events, which we can't do. We have an Audacity in hand. Two Atlas counters means that they can win in like two, three turns. I think we probably concede. Like, we can't leech to beat Wraparound because of a virus. We can't Conduit because of a virus. I really like London's thinking Hermes doesn't blank Arella, Arella blanks Hermes. Yeah, that's a better way of looking at it. I think that's the glass half full, which like, maybe that says something about me. But yeah, that's quite bad. So we have to get this naturally to 7 strength Maven, which is impossible because the deck only has this much MU. So our only way out here is drawing Hush. Just seamless with upside. That's a cool way of thinking about it. The save install cost is like really, really cool. Uh, so we can run HQ here. I don't think there's an agenda in there. It would have gone on the remote server. It's just like this cycles our thing. Uh, nope. We know Audacity. Too big to fail. That's interesting, actually. Funny enough, if we used the Urban, we could have trashed that. We got caught in our greed engine. Daily cast for like one credit is worth... Yeah, <laughs> the greed save caught up. Leech Beast slaps with wraparound? It doesn't because this is a, a virus. Yeah, right? Yeah, fitting. Yeah, we know there's a virus in R&D, so yeah, we can't do anything with Conduit, let alone we can't beat wraparound. We basically have to force the purge. So we don't know what this is. We don't know what this is. Uh, We have to slap Vendel the Trebuchet. We only have this many poison before we have to do like the 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 reclaim loop. She seems in a specific way, already using Seamus and Ob, but not in the way you use it in PD. Yeah. 
It's really cool. The Malapur Rella thing. That's like the hot thing for sure. <laughs> uh, I think we... Like, I don't... Like, what is it going to take for us to be able to contest this? No amount of leech counters beats it because London just purges. I think we have to trash the too big to fail. And even then, that's not enough. Because I think you do Atlas for 3-2. You have the thing in hand. And then you win next turn. Uh, admittedly, the deck only has how many audacities? One. So it's actually not that easy to win. Oh, no, red cap. Yeah, we lose to two red caps two turns in a row. So actually, think dealing with the too big to fail doesn't matter. We have to be able to contest this, which means we just need to install as many programs as we can um, to be able to make one good run, and then hopefully we steal the three-pointer. That's our way out, is steal the one three-pointer. So we need to contest this sooner than later. If London just scores out the 2-2, two -two, right? Like, that's the problem. Arella gets another ice here and thinks snowball. So do we trash this? We break this for free poison, free poison. We'll have three poison credits that beats Tukana. I think Tukana is probably worth dealing with. Because I think here you actually like you pull thinking you pull the regulatory and you just seamless it. Wrap of round never looked better. Yeah, it's quite good. It is quite good in the modern meta. Because I think you you pull the red cap, install it, seamless it, and then you can like Arella, jam, whatever you want in here. So we just have to contest this. I don't know whether denying London extra credits is that important. So we need as many programs, as many leech counters, but not as many leech counters, enough leech counters to be annoying. Unfortunately, our MU is full. So there's no way to get this maven bigger besides leech counters, which means that's obviously not good for us. A uh, simul chip would be important. That's a way to beat it. Seamless and FA isn't a thing, right? Uh, you can't use Seamless on a card install this turn, so not necessarily, but there's definitely decks that would FA and play Seamless. But like, yeah, technically it doesn't work. A Lily Pad means that this is akin to clicking for credit, but it eats our urban credits. I'd rather have the urban credits to install a breaker. Oh, Prague is fun, but we can't afford it. We could do it during a run. This is rough. Uh, we could do it during a run, that's it. I think we just draw again. So we lose in two turns. The best case is London overextends somehow. Because we have to remember London has to res ice and the virus. Yeah. Show the red cap audacity. Yeah. This is red cap audacity. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's the line. That's definitely the line. And this means that London can jam. Oh, a second red cap. Oh, I didn't even realize that. We lose this turn. Yeah. You do second red cap advance. Sick. Yeah, good game. Slot the clot. Yeah, I didn't realize you could do two in a turn, but red cap, audacity means you have a click left. Arella installs this red cap, which you pull with the Atlas counter before the score because you can't pull with Malapert. It doesn't matter. And then you install that. Trebuchet, Winchester. Uh, Winchester is fine. Uh, but yeah, we knew that's a virus, so we have no way of putting pressure on it anymore. It's weird. It's like this is a matchup where if they weren't on like a Rella Tucana, we have enough slap vandals to pressure the ice. But the fact that this can be assembled relatively quickly is an issue because we cannot deal with that much ice at that strength. Yeah, that's a really cool play. Len got be grinning over there to get that show. I know, I know. It's awesome. I wonder if we misplayed or anything like that. Like, I want to look at the tape and see if there's any lines that we could take that weren't great. But yeah, I don't know. I just don't like conduit in this. Ari felt a little slow. This one didn't feel that bad. It's just like our money wasn't there, but that's because we were contesting. Maybe like pivoting to conduit is not good. Claude obviously wins this, but we have our own uh, influence issues. Thanks for the game, eh? Uh, pinhole threading for the Tucana is like nearly game winning. I think that helps a lot. Pinhole for Arella is another thing that you can relatively afford with bad publicity. But like this snowball, if you stop it, this deck doesn't do anything. But that being said, it does do something when it doesn't. Yeah, that's the difference in these decks. So I don't know. I'd have to play more with this to get like a really good opinion. I think like you just, it's really rough because so far we've been running into matchups where like you actually have to get a really big Maven, which is not common. Like again, if you play against HB, you just poison by uh, what's it called, Brawn, and then everything else is okay. Uh, but this is the matchup where you have to actually consider a six or seven strength Maven, uh, which is like, kind of weird. But we've been running into matchups like that all day. So this deck has no pinhole because the influence is like two Leech, three Poison Vial, and then prognostic. I think that might be it. Just trying to slap down a poison vial deck myself offline. Yo, how's it going, Changeling? 
This is a Diogen's version. We played a different version that's running like Mantle, some other stuff, which I would want to tune a bit more. But let's do some news first, actually. That's probably a good time. There was some news announced today, I guess, or yesterday. And then we might get back into it. We've been streaming for like two hours, 46. We got a bit more in us. I'm getting hungry, but we'll get there. Cool. Okay, so this was announced the other day. Speaking of, uh, yeah, California. Announcing the 2024 World Championship. So we've been waiting on this announcement for a while. It was said that World Championship would be in North America this year because it's trying to bounce across the uh, Atlantic Ocean year after year. Mind you, it was just in Barcelona. It feels like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so this came out. Woot SF. Yeah, I, I knew you'd be stoked. So we're excited to finally announce the location and dates for the 2024 Netrunner World Championship. Mark your calendars October 18th to 20th. That is notably a bit later than it normally is. Uh, usually it overlaps ugly with Canadian Thanksgiving, which is one of the first weekends on October. So that's at least great for Canadians. At the Hyatt San Francisco Embarcadero, Embar Chedero, I think that's how you pronounce it, Waterfront Hotel in San Francisco, California. So on the West Coast, West Coast Worlds, yeah. Um, notably, I don't know if this matters for travel, but Pat pointing this out, the American election is like November 5th. So it's close to it, but I don't think that's going to have any, uh, like Embarcadero, okay, thank you. It's going to have any implications on travel. Kind of figure the West Coast would get it this year. I was pretty sure it would be between like Seattle and Boston because of the, where the OP team is. I was actually kind of blindsided by San Francisco. I think it's a good choice for also like Oceania folks. It's pretty rough for, admittedly it's like, okay, we'll, we'll talk about this. It's probably pretty rough for Europeans as much as you'll see it. Cause it is like very much on the other side of the planet. Not that Europe just had worlds, but we'll definitely see some people, but this is way nicer for APAC, which is great. Classic seventies hotel design. Yeah, we have a bunch of hotels like this, obviously, in, uh, excuse me, in Montreal as well. We have a nice tall one that looks exactly like a cheese grater. Cheese grater hotel Montreal. This will probably come up. Will you be streaming it or will you be playing it? NSG generally streams it. I'm not actually sure yet. We can talk about that after. Oh, yeah, this one. It does look like a cheese grater. Uh, we'll talk about it. This world's might be a bit difficult for me. But NSG will be streaming it, for sure. It's such a fun city, too. Winnegon, you're from that area, too, right? Also, Ocean Daughter, how's it going? I think a lot of European cities can fly directly to LAX, which isn't too far. So I'll go through the rest of the article. This is the thing that's like been really getting me that I don't fully understand. And I think it's Canada issue. Uh, the flight from like Boston or Vermont. I know one's a state, one's a city. Uh, to right now, if you book a flight from Northeast America to San Francisco direct, it's like 350 American dollars. If you book it from Canada, it's like a thousand dollars. I don't know why it's like that, but we found cheaper flights from Paris and from Berlin than you can find from Montreal or Toronto. I don't know why that is. I think it's just a Canadian issue right now. But if I'm going to fly down, like I probably should cross the border first because currently the flight to San Francisco is the same price as a flight to Europe, which is buck wild. Speaking of prices too, this is where the event is being held. And classically NSG, uh, at least when it came to Worlds a couple of years ago in Toronto, they had a block of rooms uh, specifically in the same hotel that you could rent at a reduced rate. I think NSG is kind of upfront about this. I don't know if I would stay here. This is probably a nice place to run the event, but we checked the prices of the rooms to stay for like three or four nights at this hotel for the world states. The cheapest we could find is 2000 Canadian dollars. That's absurd. That is like literally almost the entire price we played to go to worlds last year in Europe and like do a whole world's trip and see Europe. And we went to like Scotland, and a bunch of stuff, but paying $2,000 to stay at this hotel is bonkers. Um, I think that's okay. Mind you, there's no reduced NSG rate, which I think they did that in Toronto and I think they had issues with it. But like just in context, when we went to Worlds in Toronto to stay for the same amount of times in a Toronto hotel, it was like $650. This is 2000 which is pretty absurd. Um, but I think that's okay. This is where the event is going to be. And so there's gonna be a lot of people helping you out to find rooms or, you know, hotels, Airbnb, stay with friends, whatever you can do. And then you can take public transport to get to this area because staying in this area, it seems a bit lux. I don't think you're going to find uh, hotels that are at all affordable in this area, depending on what you think affordable is. Let me catch up on chat. 1000 is absurd. It's really, really wild. Yeah. User cheaply to fly into Oakland or SJ. What is SJ? Canadian airlines are a scam. Yeah, there's a problem. Canadian airlines are very, very, very expensive. We've been recommended to drop down to Bellingham and fly from here. Yes, I think you have to do something like that. Flying across the border in Canada, is it's it's so absurd. You can get a reduced rate on Expedia, but also think of this place as a game location and stay elsewhere if you're going to look to manage costs. Yes, exactly. And I, I like it's to me, it's a bit weird 
that the I, I think the Barcelona world is probably one of the cheapest worlds that has existed because Barcelona is like that. I am concerned. I think San Francisco is a relatively expensive place to be, specifically like housing and stuff like that. But to me, this is like the exact opposite spectrum. Um, I don't know if this is worth anything, but I looked at Barcelona as kind of like a runner's world where it was held in an art gallery in a location that was incredibly affordable. Food in that area was really, really cheap. And this seems like a corporate world. And that is, I don't know. I know I've talked to a lot of people locally. They'd be like, oh, this seems a bit pricey. I, I might, and I don't know. I, I'm a bit concerned about that, but we'll look at the prices. Barcelona is San Francisco. If you're going to drop 2K. Yeah, maybe. San Jose. Oh, thank you. There are heaps of options there, Andre. It's really just the highest overpriced. Yeah, 100%. Well, yes and no. I've looked at other hotels. I know there are better options, but I looked at other hotels in the area. I know there's one hotel that I stayed the last I was in San Francisco, which immediately was comped by my company, and it was a comparable price. So there definitely are you know, cheaper hotels, but I think you have to go a bit away, which is okay. But I know there's a lot of people in Montreal Slack talking about like, hey, we wanted to stay at the location. But if other people aren't, then like, there's not a real reason to anyways, but don't stay at this hotel. I think that's obvious. Corpse of air conditioning. <laughs> it's so expensive. Food is crazy. Like the price of food, Cody, because you're from, are you in SF or are you just in the area? Yes, I'm, I'm worried that this is going to be incredibly expensive and it is making a huge impact on my decision to go. I wish I was like super positive off the, off the top there, but like this might be a world that the travel is incredibly expensive. I think you can save money on the stay here, but I don't know. SNF has San Francisco has the BART as well, which helps a lot. It can be right next to the venue. Yes, there is a train line. I've taken it before. I, I took the BART from San Francisco down to outside of San Francisco. We were going to like a ranch or something for a work event and it was nice. The places outside of San Francisco, I thought was particularly gorgeous. So if you're going to San Francisco, like there's a lot to see outside of San Francisco, which is fantastic. San Francisco is a city, I think is like the sort of city that it really is good that you can get a guide like somebody. And I think there's going to be a lot of resources that tell you what to do in that city because immediately that city has its highs and has its lows It is one of the most beautiful cities in North America, but it also has some pretty like rough areas that I think you probably shouldn't go to. So it's up to you to sort that out, but I have no doubt there's a lot of support that will help you get there. And then specifically like going north to Sequoia Parks or going off to like uh, that sort of, uh, you know, there's a lot of really cool things to see in the area. Price of food, but everything is expensive. Yes. I don't know. I heard this and I was like, I, I know I have friends who live in San Francisco, but like San Francisco to me is a bit of a tricky topic because I have a lot of folks who I used to work with that worked in San Francisco studios that had to flee the city because the price of the cost of living there doesn't make any sense. It doesn't seem like a city for people and obviously it has its own issues uh, from a lot of things over the last couple of years, but I don't know. I went to San Francisco and I don't think I wanted to go back, which is a bummer because as going to Worlds is generally a decision between obviously Worlds being sick and then on top of that, Worlds being a cool place to go see. I traveled with my partner and like my partner is saying, hey, I know you're not playing at Worlds. Do you want to go to Barcelona? And then we went to Edinburgh and all that. It was 100% a tourist destination we wanted to do. But SF as a tourist destination for me, I've seen it before. My partner didn't enjoy it. I don't know. It's going to be a harder sell, unfortunately, but we have a lot of time to sort it out. Share your feelings about the city. It's comfortable to be in. Yes. It's such a strange city. The dichotomy of beauty and then the dichotomy of everything collapsing and having a lot of issues. Like, I don't know what to do. Like, it's not a city I think I'm comfortable in because it is a bit of a mess. The vibe is off. Yes, I think that's exactly how I would say it. I went to San Francisco and the vibe was very, very off. There were some gorgeous areas and some fantastic food, but then you're also walking over people who are OD'd on the sidewalk. I, I think it's like trendy in some ways to dunk on SF, which is a bummer. And I don't think you should be listening to me because I'm not from the area. I don't know. But at the end of the day, like, I don't know. This is not a city that I think I would spend a lot of money to travel to. So if I'm doing, I'm doing it just for worlds, which is difficult. I don't play at worlds. It's very expensive. Don't come to Vancouver. I know. I know. That's the problem. Like it's a very, very deep issue structurally, very complicated, but the West coast specifically generally has a higher population of, you know, people without homes and stuff like that, because the weather allows for that. And then there's structural issues. And I don't know. I'm not saying don't go. It's just like, Ah, oh, man, I wish I was as hype, but I'm not. Maybe we'll see. I say I have the same SF opinion as your partner. Yeah. Yeah, I've been there last time. It was like pre-pandemic. Uh, it was like maybe 2018, 2019. It was nice, but I did not feel comfortable. Why don't you play a world's potato fangs? I probably should. I probably should. But I really enjoy casting. Um, I really do. Uh, two years ago at Toronto, I casted the whole time. Uh, the last year, they wanted to kind of mix it up. Probably gets more healthy. 
if someone said cast the world's 100 all the rounds i would gladly do it i think it's really important not that there's not other casters doing a great job but for the world's casting to be as clear as concise as approachable as great as it can be and i really want people to be able to watch the world stream and say like this is a great game i can get into this or to relive their memories stuff like that so i value my experience casting and hopefully making a better production than i do over me playing and like i don't know how well i would do i haven't played competitively in a really long time i probably should uh, so that's what it comes down to. So I don't know. I don't know. You'd be more hyped for Seattle. I think Seattle probably has a bunch of the same structural issues that SF does. Uh, I think my partner didn't like Seattle. I enjoyed the last time I was Seattle, but I was only there for like a night and a half again for work travels. I think I'd be a bit more excited because then I'd also make a trip up to like go see friends in Vancouver and stuff like that because I've never been to BC. So I think maybe it would be a bit more hype for me. New NAPC article just dropped. Let's check that. Anyways, I'm so sorry. This was like really a, a lot of work goes into choosing the venue. I have no doubt Worlds is going to be sick. I know there's an audience here. And when this was announced yesterday, I wasn't that hype. And I was actually super anxious talking about this because again, there's so many fantastic Netrunner folks in San Francisco that are going to host you. Have a fantastic time. You're going to have a great time if you're concerned going. A lot of people are going to go to Worlds. It's amazing. Don't listen to my opinion. But at the end of the day, if I want to be honest, I don't know. This is not the hottest sell for me, uh, but that doesn't mean it's not the hottest sell for you. It's very likely in six months time. And admittedly, as the prices might go up on the tickets, I might feel differently. And I just hate that when I can't be as, as hype as I can be. But um, sorry about that. I, I don't know what to say. Looking to staying in the East Bay too. Lots of cheaper options and still very easy. Yes. Hey, for those who are local, what kind of resources can you recommend to folks? I know there's conversations I've been reading on Green Level about people putting together articles and stuff like that because San Francisco is... For what it's worth, it's not that big of a city, but it is. there's a lot going on in the city, and especially around the city as well. Traveling, stuff like that is really important. Again, I do think there's neighborhoods of San Francisco that you should probably avoid, and that sort of stuff is worth knowing. The SF East Bay locals are working on putting the city guide. Awesome. Yo, Chenchling, if you can throw that my way as soon as it's there, just so I can distribute it, uh, let me know. We're working on a guide. Oh, awesome. I certainly wouldn't be able to justify the travels, so looking forward to a great stream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people who, you know, obviously a good stream is important. Missing all those beans while you're casting. Yeah, I know. It's a complicated thing. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff and things to do, but there's also ugliness. I don't think the latter outweighs the former, and the city's so much larger than its problem areas. Yeah, I think that's a, probably a very level-headed way of thinking about it. Um, and again, I would don't take my opinion over people who live there. Chenchling does live in the area. So yeah, that's my thoughts. It's like super, super muddied. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I have to think about it going because my partner doesn't want to go, and then it's no longer like it's it's its own issue. Cool. We'll do. Okay. Nam PC put out a thing. An article. What's the article? Where can I find the article, Eric? Oh, it's here. Welcome to Nam PC Vancouver. All right. Here's some quick facts about this exciting upcoming event, March 23rd. It's almost March, so that's soon. Registration at 10:30 a.m. Round one. Hey, do y'all think that this is going to be in the new meta or not? What's your expectation? Like, how soon would the set have to drop for this to be new meta or not? at nan pc folks where bonsor recreation center 650 bonsor okay it's in burnaby that's in a suburb of, of uh vancouver i think tickets are a 35 cad maybe purchased online this is organized nice we are excited to host the first nan pc event in vancouver come up to canada this is the first nan pc event ever not just in vancouver come up to canada and play against some of the best players in the pacific northwest to offer as attendees compete for prizes and circuit points prizing will include the nan pc fermenter alt art is that here no uh as well as nan pc acrylic dice an H2CO kit will be used to supplement supplement prizing. Some additional prizing will be announced on the day. As for publication, spoiler season for Rebellion Without Rehearsal, the new Netrunner set will begin in March. We expect a release date for RWR will be announced shortly after spoiler season begins. If this release date is before 23rd, okay, there you go. It will be legal at NAMPC. So it doesn't matter if there's not a two-week window, which I think is what uh, NSG OP says, but if it's out before March 23rd, it is legal. That is wild. We are currently in discussion with distributors to secure paper copies for March 23rd. That is what happened at Cascadia. Is last year it was like really hot on the release, and so they actually had physical copies there to buy or pick up which was sick if we are unable to do so proxies will be legal of course we will update attendees with more information we'd also like to announce a special art that we're giving out to NPC vancouver and other west coast NPC events hyperloop extension whose handle is it on this artist not credited pretty fun it is an extension of probably some bridge that's known in the area we'll be giving out an NPC vancouver oh it's alec morrison that's cinderin fantastic we'll hope to see you in vancouver on march 23rd hype 
I believe it because it isn't technically an NG competitive event. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I get that. That's cool. Keep reading. Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head with the corporal comparison. SF is a very cyberpunk city in all the negative ways. It's wild. It's like, it's interesting because it's a huge dichotomy, right? Like Barcelona was at an art gallery. It was like, we were getting kicked out of the venue because we were too loud at night. There was like a $3 sandwich across the street. It was like sick. It was in the middle of like a lot of cool neighborhoods. Not that there's not a lot of cool, like, you know, more on the liberal end of, of, of cultures in San Francisco. Like San Francisco is a cool spot for a lot of reasons, but this is the opposite. It's like, in the most expensive area, that's 300% the average income. Like, I can't live in that city, which I don't know how I'd be comfortable going to a city where I cannot afford to live. Uh, it's like the exact opposite. So, Corporal Worlds versus Runner Worlds. I'd rather go to a Runner Worlds. So, I don't know. Circuit openers are in competitive tier. Oh, okay, sick. So, that's soon. That's March 23rd. Pretty soon, mind you. Uh, pay attention to NAN PC. There are going to be more updates for sure. I don't know if anybody knows when is so the deadline to submit for nationals was February 20th. When is the deadline to hear back about nationals? Because I know we have stuff to organize and we need to figure out whether we got a nationals bid or not. I get your point, but I think your dichotomy is kind of unfair. D, how's it going? Please be critical of my dichotomy because I think it is massively unfair and I'm not particularly educated about the topic. 100%. Still waking up. Yeah. Oh, I see. They're responding to you, Croria. Yeah. Extension of the Sky Train Line. Oh, cool. I take it that's above rail, considering the name, or above ground rail. Super cool. Okay. I think that's mostly the news. Again, stay tuned to NSG. Um, because spoiler season has to be soon. Mind you, March is a couple days away. It's this week. And specifically, I know I received some spoilers yesterday. So it's coming up. I can't say much more. Well, I respect the energy behind Barcelona Worlds, and it's really fun to see people on retrospect. It was miserable. I was miserable the entire time. D, please, give us a counter opinion. There was a lot about Worlds last year, obviously, that I think anybody would have done differently. Um, that's for sure. I think the thing that I'm focusing on is, at least on the financial aspect, I was very comfortable there. Actually, how's it going? Spoilers. Yeah, soon. We'll get some scoops soon. Yeah, D, if you want to share your opinion, like 100%, please do. Uh, because, of course, there's a lot to be learned. And, like, this is the bummer, too, is, like, the folks who are working on this are friends. And they put a lot of effort into this. And the fact that I'm not, like, 100%, like, super positive about it, it's a bummer. And I respect that a lot of effort goes to finding a place, organizing the contracts, all this sort of stuff. I think Worlds 2024 is going to be sick. Don't fully listen to me. But, yeah. We were dealing with heat exhaustion, weird scheduling, some really weird stress caused by the venue. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was, like... It was messy, that's for sure. I, yes, I get it. It's not intended to be a dig on Barcelona. No, I, I 100%. I, I hear you. Isn't it way cheaper for you to fly to SF compared to Barcelona and stay the BART can get you to the venue for a lot of different places in the city? It's not, Eric. I looked into it. The price to fly from, at least from Montreal to SF, is really bad. It's like a thousand bucks. It's about the same cost to fly to Barcelona. For what it's worth, I flew to Barcelona for 70 bucks. It was mostly because I've been hoarding points like a dragon. But yeah, that's going to be a hard uphill fight for sure. Now, if I go to like Boston and fly to, I think San Francisco is probably cheaper elsewhere. It's about 350 American. So 500, 600 bucks. And then obviously you have to stay there, all this sort of things. Um, so you can make it work for sure. Um, it requires a fair bit more effort. But currently to fly to like, like the prices we sing from European flights to, to SF directly are cheaper than from Montreal. It doesn't make sense. Stay in my house. Thank you, Rangi. Rangi, aren't you in Northeast? Where are you? Wow, that's wild. Yeah, it's like you want to see it. It's kind of messed up. So let's do flights Montreal to SF. Boston, that's what I thought. Okay. Yule to San Francisco, Expedia. I'll do Air Canada. Probably I should do Expedia. My sister's like really plugged into flights and we were talking about this other day and she's like, I don't believe you. And she looked it up. She's like, wait, what's going on? No, but that might make sense. Like Ian, like legitimately like come down and stay somewhere with somebody and then from there like fly. Like that probably is the only way that it makes sense. So if we go to, what is it, October? So say we come in October 16th. Uh, mind you, the time zone's not that bad. We leave on, let's say the 22nd. Done. Find. I would think Toronto Worlds would be the point of comparison. Toronto Worlds was very, very cheap. Like again, the hotel in Toronto, which had the NSG rate, was like 650 for a hotel. Like it's 400 each way. What the hell? Like, that's what it costs round trip if you fly from Boston. This is Canadian dollars, mind you. But it's 400 each way. The cheapest you can get is 400. 
going obviously direct so you can do something to work on it but like it's just absurdly expensive for no reason maybe it's an air canada problem i should look at other options but like i don't know why this is, this is weirdly expensive i don't know why it is like that flights in europe are so good compared to yes it is a canada problem thought MA would promise land of flying no trains it is but america is america has a lot more uh sort of like porter flight affordable flight i use kayak.com yeah let me check because this is only air canada use google flights that's what my sister said and then she came up with the same results as i did she was over last night so let's do google flights is this going to dox me no it's montreal to san francisco it's good though that i now know how to spell san francisco because i always struggle with it so let's go october let's again do 16th to the 22 done it's weirdly cheap. Yeah, it's weirdly cheap from Boston. Like 800 round trip. That's a lot. That's a lot to fly, you know, across North America. Again, the price is half if I just drive three hours to Burlington, Vermont. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know what it is. It is a Canada problem. Uh, but yeah, it is just a very absurdly expensive flight. I flew to and back from Barcelona cheaper than this. It's it's a weird thing. I don't know. It's like 100 less than what I get from UU to SF. Yeah, I know. The European flights are cheaper. There's an add-on that you can get for Google Flight that will cross-check all the travel sites. Oh, cool. Well, like, check this out. Say that we go from Berlin, capital of Germany, to San Francisco, same dates. It's the same price. What the hell? What? It's the same price to fly from halfway around the planet than it is from Montreal. It's a nonsense. Like, what does it cost from, like, Sydney? It's more expensive. Admittedly, Australia is pretty far. 750 CADs, 550 US. Oh yeah, that's another bummer is like the Canadian dollar is really, really bad right now. That like American travel is like a bit rough. It should get better. I agree that 800 CADs a lot, but brother, what's that's what flight costs. What do you think it costs for West Coast people to go to Barcelona? I'm aware, Eric, and I'm not saying that there is a set limit of what is expensive. It is expensive for me. If other people can afford to do it, I don't know if I can afford to do it this year. Yeah. I'm aware money is subjective for a lot of people. This is not an issue. They don't even have to look at price right now. The way that things are going like uh, it is, it is a bit much. I don't think it should be that much is a bigger issue, but it's weird. It's weird. Now plug run together. Yeah. Right. Uh, is it up yet? On that note, this is definitely worth knowing, especially because we're focusing so much on the economy of the matter. Oh, Veronica, hold on <laughs> one second. I got shown the above from someone in Mythbusters discord. In the rules reference under rules on ArkhamDB, then enemy engagement. Okay, okay. You come to EU continental instead of worlds? Like, actually, there's a chance. Like, that is a really cool thing, is that the EU continentals is about the same price. Like, going to Bergamo is about the same price, if not cheaper, than going to San Francisco. And that's the part that gets me. That's really strange. And, yeah, it's cool. Scroll back a little further. Oh, okay, thank you. An exhausted, unengaged enemy does not engage... But if an exhausted enemy at the same location the investigator becomes ready, it engages as soon as it's readied. So the fact that all of it's in a single clause, it will still engage you. But it will still move. That's what we're coming down to. The price is zero if you keep driving three more days west. <laughs> That's very funny. I'm used to $600 for flying to Toronto and back. Yeah. Canadian dollar is bad. Yeah, the Canadian dollar is really bad right now. Now try Melbourne. And Melbourne's on the other side, right? Is it really, really bad? Oh, I closed the tab, did I? No, hold on. How bad is Melbourne? Sorry, Melbourne. I should say it better. Cheaper. Haha, <laughs> nice try, Crawler. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you got to repoke once the travel agents are done. Yeah. Thank you, though. Italy's way cooler than IRL Cyberpunk California land. It's summer or something in Italy. Uh, yeah, but the big thing also for, for Italy, Bergamo, is that like it's two hours, three hours away from Slovenia, which is like where my family is. So any excuse, usually. I believe that's correct. Thank you, Veronica. I really appreciate it. Okay, so Run Together 2023 is still up. Mind you, Run Together is a thing that Bushi and I, I don't know who else to shout out has been working on, but basically it is a, a thing that is put together. It's a pack of cards of alt arts from the community that you can purchase and the funds for this go into a pool to be distributed to help people to make it to worlds where financially it's like a bit tough. Um, I've heard of some of the artists that are going to be and some of the art that's going to be in the 2024 packs is going to be hype. So stay tuned to this. 
On that note too, and I'll have more to plug, they're doing a very similar pack like this to get people to go to European continentals in Bergamo, Italy, in I believe it's, I want to say June, July, I might be wrong. Uh, I'd have to check it up. But also they're doing a bunch of tournaments and stuff like that. We might be streaming one on this channel. We'll have more information coming up. But also if you're considering going to Italy and financially it doesn't make a full amount of sense, reach out for that as well. Thank you for the correct pronunciation. Hard R Melbourne irks me so much. SGC is about an hour drive for the venue. Oak is less, but depends on what type of transportation. Yeah, Thanos, I'd have to look more into it. Like, this is just preliminary, but like, at the end of the day, it definitely makes sense to travel from Montreal. You should cross the border. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just like internally, a lot of the Montreal folks say like, yeah, this one I'm probably gonna have to sit out because financially it doesn't make a lot of sense from here. And again, does that, like, this is the problem. It's like, doesn't it mean that like your priorities are messed up if you can't make it work and you don't? I don't know. I don't think so. I hope not. You aren't there for my first world, so I'll be sad. Sorry, Alec. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's just do one more. What time is it? Three o'clock. Yeah, and again, I need to wrap up with that. Don't listen to me. Listen to people who are local. Get their advice. Look into it a bit more. I've only looked into a preliminary for sure. Uh, but yeah, I just I'm I'm bummed that I'm not as excited as almost any other city in 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 what's it called in uh, America. Okay, forty seven cards. Let's try it. I'm hungry. I didn't eat enough today. Uh, runner. How many folks have already grabbed like a hotel or stuff like that? Because I've seen people already looking at like Airbnbs and stuff, which again, it's hype. A lot of people are like, hell yeah, we can now know what to plan around, uh, which is good. It's good that it's announced as early as it is. So you can plan around it. JPW, I don't know that name. Why? Why are we exclusively playing against Built Alive today? Why are we playing against the one deck with the, the highest concentration problematic ice? Hey. Best of luck, have fun. Okay, so we still don't have Claude in this version, or sorry, Hush in this version. So things are gonna be pretty dicey. We have an early Maven, we have an early Prognostic. Change the subject if you don't mind. How do you plan to stream Arkham once Velma Denner opens? IRL or TTS? Almost definitely TTS. I'm not set up, but Jenktivist, if you watch the last like Arkham content I put on the channel with Jeff, shout out to people organizing worlds, right? Uh, something like that. And my setup actually has like three PCs attached together in a convoluted way, hopefully, so that like it's going to be edited. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to live stream Arkham gameplay because I think editing gameplay together is like actually really important to make it more watchable uh, like we did with Jeff. But that was all recorded live and then just barely edited it together. I probably like that because I want to have it so you see cams and hands and like a fair bit of production. Meme Vin? What do you mean, Wanagon? Oh, Maven. Got it. So we can now deal with Hordem. We still can't easily deal with a big old Pharos or a big old tree line. Uh, we probably should obviously play Hush. Uh, also, because we don't have Pinhole, we're pretty weak to uh, buy a vault. Sick. Yeah, yeah. I found out I have another capture card. I have one capture card in right now that has two slots. And I had an old capture card that I think I struggled with. And I'm thinking of plugging my steam deck into the third capture card, the second capture card so i actually can get three inputs but i'm pretty sure it's going to overload my computer because that was the issue before is that running two capture cards i think was too much for this aging computer uh so we'll see worst case we have a setup that works all right advance we don't have a way to contest this super early so we could do uh install nuka draw into uh what's it called a slap handle no okay so we can Dirty Laundry, HQ. This doesn't seem like the Glacier start. If that's like an early agenda, so be it. Imagine we install environmental testing and lose it to Above the Law. So I think here we can like Dirty Laundry, HQ, DZ Mantle and just be okay with it. It's nice to have an early Mantle so we hit an SDS. That's okay. They kept, I still want to get a run on HQ as much as if they have an agenda, it's probably here. Maybe they have two. I just think that's probably unlikely. So we'll go HQ. Tree line. I think we can, okay, if we install environmental testing and it gets above the law, it gets above the law. What can we do about it? The question though is then, okay, now we can do DZ Mental, so we'll just install this. Please don't above the law. That's probably incorrect, but I want to install this ideally before we install. 
Okay, cool. So we're now playing Rush. That's fine. Is this Stealth Arasana with Maven? Yeah, I wouldn't say exactly Stealth besides the one Penrose because we wanted a way to boost, but it's twinning Arasana with Maven. Uh, and then we have Poison Vial, which is really good with uh, Slap Vandal and Maven. Okay, let's get some gas. Gas is gotten. Uh, we still have no Trojans. So it'd be Dirty Laundry HQ. I think now running HQ is cool. Now you played most version. I think replacing the prognostic for twinning would be the best modification. What else? I'd have to go back and look at the list, Daijin, but I think that version can't actually play Maven really well because it's limited on strength. I think Conduit doesn't make a lot of sense because you can't run a lot with Maven because you run out of poison. So I think you need to play twinning for that reason. I think you need to run just more programs uh, just to make the Maven reasonable. But our matchups have been like really, really volatile because we've been running strange matchups. So I think we can do DZ, uh, Dirty Laundry guess hq we saw what i forgot uh, this that tree line and then we can either creative here or install the mantle i don't think we're going to need that much more money next turn i think getting the mantle down is fine we actually could install the penrose and check that server it actually might have been reasonable turn one because now with the mantle we can break mess and chesfo but if that was just a barrier the penrose would have got through as long as it was like a border control yeah Let's see if they're rushing out. Like I'm assuming they're on seamless and stuff like that. So we have to go fast. So we should face check this. We definitely should check this. Advance. Okay. So that could be mess and chest. So if it's not ket, we still deal with it. Um, do we need a second mantle? Hard to imagine. But this gives us more money. Penrose is sick. It's cool. It's not bad. It's really not bad. So I think here we can do like mantle Penrose run. Worst case, we have SMC. I guess then we don't need the mental. We should just run here. Uh, we can SMC, get nine from hand, get a slap vandal. It's an Aket. Okay, Penrose actually beats Aket. Nice. It's a barrier. Mantle gets the envy testing money. Yes, if we install it, but I wanted to keep the SMC, so we had to Arasana for a slap vandal. We had it. Reversed accounts. That's the second reverse accounts we've seen today. Okay, that's a reason to get the mantle down early, but I wasn't expecting that. We actually have to run that because otherwise we... Okay, so either we clicklessly lose up to 12, so maybe we should just duck it. The problem is if we install anything, we can't duck it. Interesting. So our options are install SMC from hand to eat the DZ trigger so it's not ugly next turn, and then just let them stew on this. I think that's fine. We might end up in... No, because if we install the SMC environment, the testing goes off. How the hell? I guess we have to run this back. But like, it's either we trash it for five or we lose up to eight, but no clicks. The issue is like, it's an annoying card. It 100% is. How do we deal with it? We click for credits. I think you're right. I think we do draw credit and just say if they trash it, they pop it and we're, we're okay. Like we click for nine credits on the following turn. The worst case scenario is if they leave it and they let us stew. But at least then they're not like scoring, I guess. That might be flawed. Triple advancing the Akat would be bad, but it's expensive. Yeah, this actually might be bad because we can't break the Akat this turn. That in hindsight might have been incorrect. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, they're playing it well. So we probably just need a draw here. Maven breaks it until next turn. Yeah, that's true. We could hard cast the Maven. Our MU gets a bit clogged. The Maven breaks it for like four though, which is not fantastic. Like, I don't know if I want to install the Maven to pay two to give them advancement to trash for three. Yeah. So we probably should have trashed it because I think, yeah, we didn't respect this line, which is like really, really quite ugly. Oh man, I wish this was optional. If this was Maeve, we'd have a, we had a chance. This card would be so much cooler if it was a Maeve. So agendas, we've gone through. They're only on 18 agenda points because there should be on 44 cards. Uh, that looks accurate. So uh, there probably is an agenda in HQ. We've gone through 10. Now, if we face check, we can install the SMC and pop off and get an access. I think that's totally fine. Let's draw once for Trojan. I think we'll run HQ here. If it's a oh, Winchester, how bad is it? It's pretty bad without poison. Oh, this sucks. I think we just now beat it. I think we just make them advance and waste it. So I think we do like install mantle for free, gain nine, uh, and then we duck it and then we keep 
lily pad. So thinking, if we install mantle, we go up to 12. Then we install lily pad, we go down to eight. If we install maven, we go down to three. Maybe that's okay. Yeah, we always have creative to bounce up. So let's just continue to set up. Like we're playing around a weird crypto crash and eventually they'll get antsy, I hope. But like, it's, it's hard to play under this. Yeah, okay, on five, okay. So now we can face shake HQ. Piotr, it's going okay. We've played two different versions. I think this one needs a bit of tuning and we've been unfortunately running into like really weird matchups. Like the one deck that has 10 strength ice, which for a Maven deck's not great. I think we're at the point in the meta where like people aren't grinding like, you know, PD. They're just playing the fun, weird stuff because it's not really a particularly competitive part of the meta. Uh, so keep that as you will or whatever. I think we want to run HQ here. So we face check. The Maven breaks for free. Now we should get a Trojan. We should get a Trojan. That's worth installing. Uh, SMC draws a card, but it commits to an SMC. I think that's fine. Cool. Ugly stalemate we got here. We probably definitely should have trashed that. But now at least they'll flood up on HQ. We can get some pressure in. Like this at least allows us to set up as gross as everything is. So now they've gone through 12 cards. They probably have an agenda in hand. A cat makes me feel like his deck is running traps. A cat is just a really good card. Even if a cat didn't have advanceable text on it, it's like reasonably on rate. But the advanceable text is pretty good in in, in uh Wayland. For what it's worth, we've seen traps. We've seen the reversed accounts. But yeah, maybe if it's like on Urtica or or checkist, I see what you mean. I just think this is such a value card, though, regardless. Even on central servers, it's expensive, and it advances your other advanceable ice. I don't know if you have to do much about it. So running HQ is really important here. If they crack and jam, I think that's more scary. Clock seems good here. Yeah, clock is a really good way to, that we can bounce up from low credits. Okay, well, now we definitely want to be running HQ. Assumedly a spin doctor. Could just be table snare. This deck looks like it has table snare energy. It's a value neutral statement. Uh, so I think we draw for a Trojan. Not exactly. Maybe something weird build like Trick of Light or something. It could be, but generally a cat you'd want to keep the counters on. I'd be more seamless if they're on 4-2. Like you don't Trick of Light 4-2s usually. I'll run the Spin Doctor. It's a snare. It's not that bad. Yeah, Spin Doctor. Okay. So now they shuffled away one agenda. So they've still gone through 15 cards, so there might be another agenda in HQ. I think we consider overclocking HQ. Yeah, the game of chicken, I think we're like in a reasonable spot. I think we do overclock HQ to get an access because here they probably have to like double ice and jam. I'm worried that they're going to play for the late, late game. At least Maven's in a go okay spot. We have seven MU so far. Let's go HQ. Weird run. We can always SMC for something if they don't crack. Uh, I'll say no action. So even if they res a uh, Winchester here, we're okay. And then if we don't want to lose this money, we can SMC to install. I don't actually know what the next install is. We would love a twinning here. Eku, it's going well. We've been playing cool Maven deck. It's a tree line. Okay, so that's fine. We break that entirely for free. Eventually that does get out of hand. Like again, we've been playing cursed matchups. Uh, so now we probably want to SMC. We can install. I'm just going to do it. We get a card draw. So what do we want to get here? Uh, propeller is fine. It means that we can challenge barriers. Is it worth it to take a creative to possibly have them crack reversed? I don't know. Maybe. So what we pull here is interesting. The propeller is totally fine. It gives us a backup breaker. Uh, I think that's okay. It wastes some money, but we'll use this to trash an NGO front. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, so now we know we can run HQ once a turn. And once they advance it, right, like Maven's still catching up, but not forever. So we could creative here and then it crack it. I see what you mean. Being on five is fine. Yeah, if they crack it, it's okay. Let's see what they do. Yeah, okay. They cracked it. That's okay. So that's fine. So now they're going to jam their mode server. Aket, we break for two credits. They get an advancement on something. They can res a mess on Chesso here if they advance the tree line or just click for credit, which you advance the tree line. 
They advanced that. Oh, so they what can they res here? Four cost advanceable. So we don't have a poison vial. We have three and twenty-eight. Uh, we don't have a lot of money. We probably end up slap handling that cat, and then we can maven through this. So I think we do credit, dirty laundry archives, tree line and hordem. Yeah, uh, it could be another cat too. Let's see if we just die. Do like um, an urtica, ice wall in the bin. Cool. Uh, no action. Okay. So here, I think we're going to just slap vandal this. We would love a prognostic. We'd love a twinning. I think having, we need more twinnings. The card's so good. So we can only break one here. So they get an advancement. So slap vandal, uh, host, draw a card, uh, break, and the run. So if this is an Urtica, we die. If they advance it with the Akkad. Uh, Urban's nice. They do advance it. So we could die to here to Urtica. I'm going to access it. I don't think we're playing around Urtica on JNet casual. Uh, oh, yeah, I know. But it's probably just reversed. Maybe they missed. They're typing. Oh, apparently not. Okay. It's an NGO front. Okay, sick. Makes sense. So two NGO fronts down. We have five credits. Um, I think moving there on the slap vandal is okay. It's not the most important thing. So if we install this, we go into three. Yeah, that's fine. And the mantles are good. We're not getting our full value. But now, okay, so now they've gone through, uh, what is it? 16 cards, shuffled one back. So we probably want to be running HQ. It's free every turn. Running HQ there might have been better than clicking for uh, installing the urban, let's be honest. Especially because we had mantle value we're leaving on the table. So I think we probably took the la worst last action there. We're going to bounce a slap bundle for a bit, and installing it for free is kind of nice. But ideally, now we top deck another DZ and go from there. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So we need the diesel to hit a poison vial. Ideally, they don't jam in their mode server. Any <laughs> they did. So now we want to consider checking this. On 12, they can res this. Uh, if it's like uh, Pharos, which is one of the cards they probably wouldn't have rezzed, like now we have to scale. So we'll pull that back. We have to open with the Diesel, and we have to get something better than that. So we can get the Maven to six strength best. So it beats Pharos, albeit very, very expensive. Uh, we beat a catch from hand. So we could overclock the server. I think this is an agenda. I think it's very likely to be an agenda. So the question is how we deal with this. If we diesel, we have a one in six chance of find, well, not a one in six chance. It's one in six in the deck to find a poison vial, which we install for free. I think we will do it. That's an absolute bummer. So we could always install a slab bundle and cycle it down. The problem is if it's a Pharaohs, at least they spend a lot of money resing it, but I think we just overclock this. See how it goes. Uh, no action. We haven't seen a boarding drill yet. That's obviously concerning, but it's nice to get it out sooner than later. But this is probably an agenda. Yeah, hey, no worries. Take your time. For someone who talks a lot on their turn, so our turns can be slow on stream, like, yeah, take your time. It's totally fine. So they figure out how much they can res here, right? Like a Pharos is seven. Uh, it is relatively expensive. If we don't want to take the tag, it's going to be four overclock credits, two mantle credits. That leaves us with one. That actually gets a bit dicey, but if they res the Pharaohs, they'll be on three credits, so they can't res the innermost. Well, they probably can't. They didn't last turn. As much as maybe it was in their incentive not to, because the Aket gave the free NGO value. It's a gain of credit, and yeah, man, this ice is good. It's a bummer. It's a Hortum. Okay, sick. So we can give them a credit. So we'll use Maven. The question is whether we want to use the overclock credits or the mental credits first. I think we use the mental credits first. Oh, wait, we can Penrose it. It's the same cost. It's the same cost. So the mantle is better if this is the high strength code gate. The overclock is better because we use the overclock credits. I think we'll use the overclock credits. Oh, what is right here? 
So we break this for one. We install for free. We break it for one. So that's fine. What is this broken for? We don't know. It's an advanceable card. It has to be. So that closes the pool. I guess the most expensive advanceable is the Colossus. The camera is Pharos. So we want the overclock to trash things. I think we just use the mantle and assume we're not going to break a code gate because there's no way that we're going to break a code gate there. That's going to need Penrose because it'd be five strength anyways. What am I doing? Oh, sorry, sorry. You can. Oh, wait. Hmm. So breaking this means they can't res Pharos if we full break it. So if we don't, I didn't intend to full break it, but full breaking it is probably correct. We're going to lose overclock value though. Uh, I'm going to use the credits off the overclock. So I'm going to, I used off the wrong thing because we are only going to use one credit here. So what do we do? Two from the credit pool and two. Yeah. So I'll give myself two and take two off of overclock using overclock. uh slash counter credit can you do this not a not installed card oh sick thank you sick thanks so now they can't raise a ferris but they <laughs> oh owned okay message has well. so that was the reason to undo what we did so now we lose credits here so oh fuck. oh they got us so good because we needed to keep a mantle around to beat Mesta Chesso to beat the Aket. Oh, that's that's dirty. Dirty. So we can still beat it. We just have to simul chip the mantle. Yeah, we can still beat this. So we can counter. We have to maven this, which is even more expensive. But I think we're credit perfect. But we did not do a great job. So we break a subroutine. Uh, the end the run. We go one, two. That fires, we're through. That was a hard line to play around. So now we need to break a cat. So we can install break. Actually, we don't need to flicker this. So we do RS on it from hand. Do we need to have a credit to be able to deal with Rashida? No, I think it's an agenda. Slap Vandal. Draw a card. And then we'll break it with the one last credit. So that's why you play around overclock, yeah. So we should have used our credit pool as fast as possible, which is super counterintuitive to how you normally do it. The issue here is we can't uh, trash Rashida. That's the only bad thing. Uh, end the run. So we're out of money. We have a flux. We have no target besides the propeller. So give us a above the law. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, squeaky, squeaky. Shaper nonsense. So what do we do here? We can still install something. We probably just click for a credit. Uh, I think Nuka is okay. We can run R&D for a single. I think it's more important that we have some amount of money. Yeah, click for a credit is probably not wrong. Uh, but what do we throw out here? Like overclock creative is good. Nuka diesel are overlapping a bit. I don't think we need Nuka anymore. I think diesel and just Lily Pad will be enough card draw. Uh, maybe the flux is extra. Uh, we definitely want another DZ. Yeah, that was really cool. That was a hard thing to sequence. We were playing around this being the seven coster, but the mess and chess one does make sense. They didn't use the ability. Oh no, they advanced it with that cat. Of course they used the ability. That was really cool. Yeah, our other play to get an extra credit is we can always simul chip the mantle back, which is sick. It's a boring answer, but can, can't eat only neuron activation plays. So now if they jam every turn, right? This is relatively difficult to, to, to contest. So we're going to need our twinning sooner than later. And we're just going to need a dig R&D. We've seen, uh, we've gone through, what is it? F 17 cards. We've seen two agendas, one bottom back. So there might not be agendas in HQ. But they don't have really a play here besides like advance, advance, advance to get, you know, three credits. Six credits technically, but you know what I mean? This is tricky. Advancing the Hordum. Doesn't really matter. Advancing the tree line is the one that is worth something. There you go. There you go. Advance, advance, advance. So five credits, they can res a message chest for there. That's fine if we face check early. Uh, start a turn, take clicks, return slap. So if we diesel, we'll be on eight cards. We probably can take a turn off here as much as we do want to run. 
I think if they had an agenda, they might jam. So we can always consider running HQ. If that's a Winchester, it is kind of quite bad. So we pro could run R&D here. Do we flux? Let's diesel for a poison vial. Yeah, we got it. Okay. So now we can do like... Environmental testing is the next econ card, but I think we just do poison vial, run R&D, and then we creative commission. Lily pad's a may, so you can refuse it. Let's just get singles. Let's lock the top of the deck. Uh, no action. So do we draw here? Uh, it depends. We mm, tree line. Okay. So we can install a Trojan to draw a card. We can choose not to draw a card, but then it gets a slap vandal in rotation, which is good. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. So we can use Arasana to install the slap vandal. Otherwise, we can install the flux capacitor, which is better. Yeah, that seems better. Draw a card. I don't think we do draw a card here. We can always throw out our two worst cards. I am assuming it's one slap vandal. Yeah, that's annoying. And then we'll break this with Maven. So this is what the deck is trying to do. Uh, choose an install card. A poison vial makes sense. We could do propeller. Propeller's not terrible. Uh, breach server. Cool deck. Deck is doing something cool. I am scared. Uh, we could just get money here. Throw out a lily pad. Actually, no, that's fine. All right. Now we just need to draw our twinning. We have two prognostic, one twinning, and sixteen. Yeah, armed means they're probably on seamless and some sort of kill combo. Not a lot of money here, so this push with two NGO fronts looks like it's probably worth contesting. They just can't afford to like advance this tree line to the point it's nonsense. But this this is cool. This is doing its thing. They gained a credit, so they didn't advance this card. For what it's worth, like obfuscating that this is an advanceable card might be worth something, but it kind of insinuates that this is more likely to be a Winchester or an Afshar because instead of clinging for credit, they could have advanced a card and they chose not to. Uh, we do bounce that. Okay, so if we want to contest that. This is annoying. Uh, we always break the Aket for free because of Slap Vandal. It doesn't matter. So I think we can consider charging this. We can also break the Mess and Chesfo subroutine for free with Poison Vial. So I think we do just start ducking it. I didn't know math. We're just playing on vibes right now. So we run the Hordum. Uh, we break it. This is just bait. It might be, but like, I don't know what they bait us into. Like if it's a reversed accounts, we still have to deal with it. But like, no matter what, install advance is financially reasonable for them. I just don't think this cost us that much. Vibe runner, <laughs> right? Like, so we run this. We install the... Um, the flux. No, because we want to slap vandal this. So I think we slap vandal that. Oh, we're over MU then. So we don't get a poison vial. I think that's fine. So then we don't install this. So we run. We break this for 1-2 poison. We break this for 1-2 poison. Real 1-2 poison. <laughs> we, ball. we break this for mantle. So we just have to do math because ducking mess and chest was incredibly important. Again, play hush or whatever. So this we want to pay from pocket. It'll drop us to three. Uh, this will take our three away. So are we going to see the top of R&D forever? Yeah, I know. I'm worried that this isn't an armed acid protection. If it's the end of line, it's not great. It's not above the law. But how do we beat the message? Chesso is the question. Because this server is relatively cheap to, to run, right? Like this is two credits. So we actually could install another environmental testing. We might have not wanted to use the urban credits. I think we install another environmental testing. It drops us to two. Uh, we run this. We break it for two. We're on zero. They can't use Mesnachesvo. We break Mesnachesvo with Maven. Yeah, I think that's actually right. But then we want to have money to be able to uh, trash, uh, uh, what's it called, reversed. I'm thinking this is reversed. I don't think we beat reversed here, though. I think we do this. Run. Break poison, tank, slap vandal from hand for free, break mantle. Oh no, we have to shit. <laughs> yeah, I think we just run RD. Let them have this. This is fine. With the bubble lab, this is fine. We can actually charge environmental testings too. I don't know if we have to. We probably should. Like, they don't seem to be on five threes. I think we charge environmental testing. I think we have enough poison. Obviously, a twinning here would be absurd. Uh, breach. NGO. Yeah. 
If we run back, this is not first time. This is whenever. No, first time during each encounter. So it is first time, but also technically whenever. So we can actually gain. Hold on. <laughs> We're credit short. Unless we want to overclock this. But if we want to overclock this, we break this, get environmental testing. It doesn't fire. I think we just draw here. Bummer. Okay, let's see what happens. Worst case, they score off-world. That's not that bad of a case. We just need our twinning. Uh, twinning comes in really, really hot with uh, with Flux. Second Ice makes sense. Probably an NGO on the remote server because there's no way they can afford that. They didn't advance that, so on four credits. Okay. Another Mantle is pretty good. Take clicks. Return this. Oh, our MU is not great. We could, in theory, discard the Penrose. Another mantle is actually a credit a turn. I think the Penrose we can get rid of because we have Simul Chip. So we'll turn this to hand. So I think we'll trash the Penrose. Install a mantle. Draw. Prognostic. Install Prognostic. Gain nine. Pop off. Okay. So now we can run our DC a single. They drew an unknown. So this is an advanceable card. We have Poison Vile, Mantle, Propeller, Prognostic. We need one more MU. We might get on the Prognostic. So now we run R&D. Look at the top two. It's Poison Vile off the top rope. So we can always Mantle that on our turn or their turn, followed by an Urban Art Massage. So Mantling, uh, no action. Oh man, this is so wild. Yeah, it's as vibes for sure. So here, we want to Flux from Hand draws a card. No, because we already installed the Maven. So Flux from Hand. We don't really have a reason to Flux from Hand. But why not? So I think we prognostic on their turn doesn't matter. Mantle credit, poison vial. Yeah, I'm on it. Yeah, no worries. So we do one, two. It gives us nine. Then we from hand, the order here didn't seem to matter. We do flux here. We need to be set up to run back. That's the thing. So then we'll break this with Maven. One, two. We get a flux. Choose an installed card. Uh, at this point, the propeller is worth something. So we can beat big stuff. We know the top of the deck is... Oh, God. This chat log thing is going to spoil us. Is an urban art. All good. Unknown. We can run back. Spin Doctor, we will run back. Uh, if we run back, they have to rest something that's higher than six strength. That's advanceable. Uh, we're going to pay out of pocket. We have money for days. We also can like draw, install, cycle, simul chip on our turn to be able to like draw the what's it called at the top of the deck and get a free prognostic trigger. Because on the top is what? An urban art for massage? This is once per turn. It's so goofy. Give me an agenda. Oh, they're on traps. Ooh. They're definitely trying to hurt us. So yeah, if we want a simul chip flicker with the mantle, it draws a card. I'd argue that's probably not worth it. But yeah, false flag is in the bin. That is a big advanceable card. Now the thing is false flag, just credit, credit, credit. Okay, so we need a we have time to get our twinning, which is what we've learned, which is fantastic. So I don't we here we could prognostic on their turn, but we've used our mantles and we know what it is. So urban art will return that. So we're gonna draw. Second urban art you can do. It is not unique. Uh we'll draw. I think we run here. Single. They drew an unknown. We should be running HQ. Look at the top two of the stack. Prognostic, Q looped into twinning. So twinning's coming up. It is a Pharos. Okay. So Pharos is the taxing thing. If they triple advance this, it is just going to be a bummer. There's no way around it. But luckily, they're out of money. This is not an NGO front because they would have advanced it. So I think it's reversed. So Pharos, we have to deal with. Prognostic into twinning. <laughs> this is so wild and I'm way too hungry to be able to, to schedule this correctly. So, uh, no trigger. So we can prognostic here to cycle the prognostic. You're allowed to install a unique on top of a unique. We know this is going to cost four. Cycle in a Penrose. Uh, it's not that much cheaper because we have Maven. It's actually more expensive. But you're right. We could like trash something to get a Penrose in. I don't think we need to. Like what we can do here is actually use Arasana to install a poison. Uh, Arasana to install. Yeah, this is the play. We use Arisana to install a flux. It goes here. 
It's actually cheaper to break this with um, slap. We draw a card and now we can prognostic into our twinning. We haven't used charges yet. Oh no, prognostic is not for events, never mind. Um, we break this for two and the run. One, two. Then we charge the poison vial. We don't break the rest, we poison vial it. Okay. The twinning is gonna be super, super important. And we actually do need the twinning to be able to like charge, unless we just prognostic every turn, which I think is what we're gonna do. Uh, so ideally slap handling this does save us a credit we can largely afford it most of our money we played early though we have no more environmental no creatives no dirty laundry so we actually have limited money in the deck so we just have to go for twinning runs and just let them like cook probably seems like a better charge for when pharos is triple advanced uh you're 100 correct yeah i think we learned that in the other game i think that is correct give me an agenda Okay, okay. Do we run HQ here? I think there's a chance to run HQ here. Overclock's good. Okay, so what do we not need? We don't need the urban. We don't need the prognostic. We could just click for a credit. Uh, we can draw the twinning too. SMC doesn't have that many targets anymore. So we'll do one, two, three. And now every turn we do the twinning, that means that we want one more MU card. We have two more DZs and eight. Uh, we can prognostic off the top rope. I don't think we're accelerated to do that. Like, I don't think we're pushed to do that. Uh, and then eventually we'll triple advance this. If that's the case, we can just like charge flux on HQ. We should be running HQ this turn, not R&D. Because yeah, credit, credit. Trojan horse. Damn, okay. So they either trash something or we spend four. Wait, hold on. If we spend less money, no. So we have to spend up to, what is it? Trash one install program with install cost equal or less than the amount by which your trace exceeded the runner's length strength. I can't believe this is just upfront credits. Trash one installed program equal or less than. So we have to spend at least four because otherwise they can trash a one coster. Okay. Not bad. Economic warfare for one. Okay. So they're on one credit, so we can definitely run HQ for free. So all we do is Urban Art Vernissage, we return that to hand. We install twinning out of pocket. We run HQ. Top two cards of stack, SMC into Slap Vandal. Okay, so our MU is further down. Continue. Uh, continue. Encounter. We can sweep three cards on HQ here. So then we use Arasana. We, unfortunately, the DZ means that we can't use the Urban. Oh, that's messed up. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Because we break the subroutine first. Draw a card. So now we can use the Maven to break this. So we can charge the twinning to flush three. I think we want to do that more than the propeller. So then we can see three on R&D, like on HQ. That's so cool. As long as you break first and then. Do you chance they're flooded? Yeah, I think they have to. We, we missed a lot of cards. And if they want to play the, the Trojan Horse, like they probably have something here. So we'll see three. Messina, Winchester, another false flag. I don't think we care about the false flag. I think we're just going to threaten centrals. So then on our turn, we're going to use the mantle to like reveal with the twinning. So I think we just do credit credit. So they're drawing an unknown. We have two pressure points. Another setup where like having what's your name would be fun. But like, I feel like the setup for Shaper control is good regardless of what happens. Ferris is on three. Okay. So now this is a setup we're having what's called is really good. Oh man. Uh, why do we keep ending up in matchups where we really want Beatriz? So on their turn, we'll do, uh, what's it called? Prognostic using the mantle. Is install a slap handle? No. Start turn, take clicks, return this. So we can see three in HQ. Hush is good. Yeah. Yeah. Hush would be better than Beatrice. And I do think we probably play one fewer poison vial for Hush. Uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. So we just continue to do our gross siege engine top two. Now it's flux slap. So slap on top, continue. They can't res. Do you think it's an agenda? I don't think it is. Continue encounter. They're getting sieged down. Arasana, stall the flux, goes on here, draw a card. So the next top of the deck is flux. Uh, we break for two, charges the twinning once. Uh, I think we'd rather charge the propeller so that we can run the Pharos on a big dig. Breach server, C3. Maybe that's why we should trash the false flag because we're going to be hammering HQ over the next turns. 
There used to be an econ card that said gain two cards for every advanced card. It cost zero. It's sick. And by sick, I mean problematic. Ness and Chester, Winchester, False Flag. The same three cards. That's bizarre. What's the chance of that? Okay, we have two DZs and six. What's the most we can get the Maven to? We can get seven, eight, nine. Is that enough? Nine MU? No, it's not. The most we can get to is eight. 15%, I think. That's higher than I thought it'd be. <laughs> is that right? That seems high. Now we just have to remember to prognostic on their turn. We kept one mantle. So here they don't have much to do besides click for credits. Like can't even afford to advance cards. We could get blown out here. Like this could be credit advance and then they like slow roll at reversed accounts, which is what this looks like. I think it's reversed accounts because we've seen it could be the last false flag. So weird that you saw the same cards in the exact same order. Yeah, that's even weirder, right? It's not only the same three cards, but then same three order. Credit, credit, credit. Makes sense. So on their turn, prognostic, reveal, uh, mantle credit, flux, install. Uh it draws two cards. But I don't think we're quickly drawing into anything. I think we do install it. Okay, simul chip. That's good. That actually gives us some flexibility. Uh, take clicks, return flux to hand. They could res an Afshar here. I think we just do the same thing. Run HQ C3. We're building twinning counters faster. We're just going to charge the twinning because uh, we don't have to break Pharos once. Look at top two here. Stack. Simul chip DZ. Okay. Since you haven't seen Agenda lately, I think the card in remote is probably an agenda. I think it could make sense. I just don't think we have to run it. Like if they score out an armed intimidation, I think we're okay with it. So sorry, this is tedious. Uh, approach ice, continue encounter, Arasana, flux, tree line, draw a card. So on top is DZMZ, which is the best. Uh, break for two, mantle, mantle, choose installed twinning, sweep for three. The thing is, like now that they draw agendas, this being their mode server is good because they have to commit to over installing. So if they draw agendas, they get stuck in hand. Aket and the line off world office. Okay, on game point. So we know Aket, Winchester, Hordem, and the line. I think we know their whole hand. I should check the log. Uh, so here we don't have much to do. We can install the simul chip. We can install the simul chip. We really don't have to do this. We'll click for credit. If you install both fluxes, you can farm two propeller. They're unique. Yeah, you can. They are one of the only unique Trojans in the game. Yeah, how's it going, by the way? I don't know if I said hi. What we can do, though, you're right, is that we can actually flux, simul chip for flux, and go on. The thing is, you can't do it to the same ice. Yeah. Because, like, how many time machines does someone have? I think if you have a time machine, you can build another time machine. Maybe that's just me. So now they can raise a Winchester here, which we break for one credit. Uh, prognostic. This will be a DZ. Install. Uh, for free. Start turn. We have one more MU, so we actually can keep the flux there. Which means we actually, yeah, we could have had, oh, we can't have two fluxes. Choose Arbin. We don't have to bounce it. So now we run HQ. We are gaining more twinning counters than we can possibly use. Look at the top two. It's Creative Commission Nuka. Okay. Uh, no action. If they res here, it's a Winchester. That's perfect. Because now we could do continuing counter. Arasana. Slap. Here we have the MU for it. Draw a card. So creative's in hand. Slap. Break for one. We break creative this. We break this for free, which is absurd. Uh, we just want to make sure we don't use all our mantle credits. We poison vial their other two subroutines. We know all but one card in hand. So we're just going to continue doing this until we like go for an R&D dig, which we probably should do sooner or later. Do we need, uh, need a deck to trigger prog? Oh my god, yeah, maybe. I'm not actually sure. You're right. I forgot we bottomed out. We have to not draw no more. Uh, okay. We'll charge the twinning. We can charge poison vials. It shouldn't matter. Breach server, C3. Okay. Winchester. So there's one unknown mess in chest, but we missed it. Uh, so I think here we just do credit, credit, credit. Yeah. No change in game state. Can we reveal if we don't have a deck? Last card being nuke is a dead card anyways. Oh, that's true. We just want to make sure we never hit lily pad. Can we turn lily pad off? Never. Oh, uh, we probably could have gotten R&D for three. We also run HQ twice and sweep sweep, but like if they have an agenda, it has to go somewhere. So the question is, do they have something to jam in their mode server? And if they do, is the agenda and server one going to archives? 
Nice. This is what they have to do. They advanced it too. So we know it's probably the Hordem. Prognostic. Mantle. It's a Nuka. Take clicks. We don't actually have to return anything anymore because we're not installing. So Urban Art is useless. So at least we're going to do less clicking. We should just put this on toggle. Uh, always. I guess. That could be the second Mesny. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that actually makes sense too. Uh, that's pretty expensive though. We are eventually going to run out of poison, but I think the game runs out before we run out of poison, let alone we have another one. This is prison. Yeah, I wonder if like a snare or something is their way out here. You just let us know when we should run R&D and see a bunch. Uh, break for two, one, done. Install, I think the twinning still. Sometimes I think it's concerning when runners have their deck on the table. Yo, Shaper, let's go. You're not playing a Euro board game? You're playing Dominion over here? That's not how Dominion works. Uh, C3, Winchester, okay. Mess and Chesswell, okay. So might be the Hordem. Uh, this cost us one credit. This cost us one, two credits. I think we wait till... We actually should lock R&D here because then we don't have to run for a while. And we can always just simulate the propellers. Yeah, we should run R&D here. Uh, cause this cost us one credit. This cost us one credit. This is likely to end the game. And like, while this propeller is empty, we just simulate it back as many times as we need to. Five hosted power counters. So five hosted power counters will break one. We in theory could, like, we don't have to use the poison vials here. I'm going to keep that token there. Uh, and then we'll poison vial it. In theory, we want to not empty the poison vial. It shouldn't actually matter, but once it's gone, it's gone. It's like terraforming Mars. Look at all my cubes. Opponent's so dead. Uh, they could win to like a surprise access trap, like a behold or something, because we know they have end of line. We could lose to like snare or last click. There's ways, but yeah, I do agree this is not a comfortable spot for them to be. These two decks were made for each other. Ah, Pharos is hard. Trojan horse. Predictive planogram off world office. Okay, thank you. GG. Yeah, that was a rough end game. I would not like to be in their shoes, especially because for a couple turns, thanks for the game, they stopped having the ability to make plays, which is like when you're on zero credits, what do you do? You probably have to jam in the remote server. And like, I guess that's a good reason why we should have trashed the false flag is just to make sure that it doesn't happen anymore. But like, we could have lost to like a public trail. There's things like that. Uh, so public trail retribution is not the worst, but public trail end the line, maybe. Hey, catch you around. Neat deck though. I do think like the public trail rush decks, as much as this wasn't rush, can get people off guard, right? Like this looks like Wayland super modernism as much as they have a massive false flag, which like install advance advance on that is like comparable to Scion, but obviously closes the game in different ways. All right. Considering comparing Neverwinter to Dominion when I was attempting to describe Neverwinter to board game convention, I was hoping to host a learn to play table at. Nano, how's it going? I don't know what's the closest thing you can compare Neverwinter to. Like if people played other like FFG LCGs of that era, they're kind of similar. But I don't know what you can compare it to. I went with Innovation. I haven't played Innovation, so that one's unfortunately lost on me a bit. Anywho, I think that's it for today. We'll be back on Thursday. We're going to play the Decklist of the Week, which we played against today. Uh, looks really fun, which is quite cool. Hold on. I know this is off topic, but I was surprised the new GNK had FFG cards with Dawn coming out this year. Yeah, no, Spark, I hear you. Uh, it is strange, but it's a really cool card for people to have and enjoy, and especially for people that don't have the FFG card pool. It's nice to win one of those or two of those and be able to deck build immediately. So I think it's cool. But I think it's 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 true that's going to rotate, but I don't think it's it's still a sick card. So uh, I want to give a shout out again. The Metropolitan Grid is supported by Patreon. Uh, we have a whole bunch of patrons that support. If you want to find more uh, information, we have a link in the Twitch and the YouTube description. Uh, these are just some of the patrons. We have a whole bunch of people that support the channel so that we can put time into doing this. Shout out to Baxter and Ben Blum, our newest patrons supporting at the, the Sure Gamble tier. Mind you, we have a bunch of tiers here. You only see here, uh, uh, what's it called? Degree Mill tiers, which are a lessons tier and the Sure Gamble tier. Hey, there's me. Yeah, you got your little... You, you, did I get your icon on? No, I haven't yet. You, you asked and then you didn't send it. So I'll probably have to pull it for you. If you see your name here and you want to get a little nice icon next to it, which we have a couple people that have nice icons, 
send in my way. Ideally a PNG with transparency, not too big. And I'll attach it next to your name, name, which I think is quite fun. If you want to get some personalization, some people do like their local meta, uh, your podcast, your like testing group. There's a lot of things you can put there to get your, uh, little stink next to your name. Blue moon by Knizia is the comparison I use. I've heard good stuff. Thanos, you were telling me about blue moon a long time ago, and I have not found a copy yet. Anyways, thanks so much. If you also want to support the channel in a non-financial way, liking this stream, sharing it, leaving a comment, subscribing to the channel, there's a lot of easy ways you can help out as well. Thanks for playing my deck and iterating on it. Yeah, Diogene, I thought it was a really, really cool deck. There's definitely some problems with it. I think today we had like a rough time because we were constantly running into big ice. But I do think if you want to play this deck, I know the version I put together, you probably all you want to do is drop a poison bio, which they do seem extra. I think with flux capacitor, it's not the most important to have three of them and then play probably a pinhole and a single hush. And I think you're in a good spot there. I think that's probably pretty comfortable. I don't know whether you need one greed cyberdelia because uh, we get to late game, but I think that's actually a reasonable spot to be. I think it's really cool. And I was so surprised you didn't play flux because that's like very much the sort of card I think you would enjoy. And uh, it's like a really goofy one. And anytime a card doesn't see play, we want to find an excuse to play it. 1v1 factions, hidden info, FFG basically pulled influence points from Blue Moon, I assumed. Oh, super cool. Great stream today. Thank you, Alec. Uh, shout out again on the upcoming events. Again, if you want to figure out more about worlds, all that stuff is up here. So you can start planning around it, uh, getting that stuff sorted out sooner than later. Mind you, I generally think airplane tickets only get more expensive the longer you wait. So if you're locked in for that, you can definitely find that here. Again, we talked a bit about worlds. Um, if you want to leave your comment on this YouTube channel, roast me for it. Please promise, please do, because I think that's actually quite important. And that's it. Take care, y'all.